I've been drinking since eleven thirty. Yo, 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 what's up, people? Welcome to Off the Edge, the St. Paddy's Day Eve, I guess, uh, version, where we will do nothing St. Paddy's Day related. But I just threw it in the title because that's you know, douche man. Just think. Three years ago, well, I wouldn't have been, but you would have been pounding some green beers. If it had been seven years ago, I would have been drinking them with you. Eight years ago. Yeah, I don't drink anymore, but uh, no, I never me, drank green beers either. I always have drank. Have you ever been own. out in your life? Have you never been out at a St. Patty's Day party and had green beer just because really. of it? I have. I wasn't that big of a social drinker. I was more like a sit at home, crush beers and like make videos, watch TV kind of dude. I don't know. Like I went through a college phase, I guess, because I was also doing other shit. But I, I mean, was when I was like 21, of course, I went. That's out. what I'm talking about. That's but what I'm talking about. I mean, you not never that drink? much. And St. Patty's Day wasn't really a thing. For, I'm not Irish. Wasn't really. Did I spent a business trip in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day when we had an unlimited expense uh, account and we drank yeah, our ways right. around the country. And they dyed the river green. And I, I think I threw up through my nose green dyed beer for like a day and a half. That's disgusting. Horrible. Horrible. But it's uh, just what's going on, Marco. <clears throat> Marco's a channel member. Marco. Connelly, channel member. I'm gonna try something new tonight. I'm gonna try to just chill and hang out. You guys can ask questions and we can answer them. And I don't know. I don't want to be like the entertainment tonight. I just want to like relax. See if I can pull that up. Probably won't share, happen. But. Share your knowledge on uh on blade steel heat treat preferences. Oh God. I put skiffs in my um Malibu today and it was super, super loose. And I think they just need to they need to loosen up some more. Or I need to loosen my pivot of hair. Are they tight or loose? You said loose. No, I think they need to, the skiffs themselves, I mean, last night they seemed, because they had fresh oil on them, to be a little more broken in, because I got it to where the blade, I like to try to tweak the pivot down when I have skiffs in, if I can, yeah. and still That's get the I action. Get it to where there's no play at but all. But you you still got a tiny bit of turn to where you can keep no play and improve your drop. I've done about a million Malibu skiff swaps in my day, and what I noticed it's the same thing I noticed with like Craig Brown knives, sharp by design knives. You put them in there, you got to tighten that pivot down and then just wait, give it like a day of flicking and then they'll start just singing. But yeah, I mean, right out, right out of the shoot, you know, it does, you know, they have to break it. They have to wear a track in. Sure. And if and it's a new to... knife, you also need a detent to wear a track in. In your case, not a new knife. But Not detent. the other thing is I always like to put skiffs in immediately because the skiffs don't only wear a track on the washers. They wear a track on the blade. So if your previous washers have already done that and then you put skiffs in and they don't line up, it can make things a little bit. I don't know. It could feel I know off, something maybe. Real hard. I don't know if it would just take time to wear in or something. And then it depends on the steel. You know, if you're talking about Magna Cut at 64 or whatever, or S9EB at 61 or 2, it's going to take a while for the skips to break in because it has to wear that track. Sure. Coated, you know, there's a lot of variables. But that anyway, I usually try to give it a day or two of straight fidgeting. And then if this if it's still not dropping or whatever the way I like it, um, then I'll you know adjust it. Well, what I find uh, interesting when I've switched out because I've upgraded all my hinders to skiffs and I've upgraded the Malibu, and those bad boys are stainless steel bearings. Hold on, sorry, my daughter came in. Oh, hey, mama. What did mom do? She just waved. She's gonna throw you in the trash can. Oh my goodness. Come on, you want to say goodnight? You want to give me a hug? Or are you going to just sit under the desk? Okay. You enjoy these protection times. Yeah. 
This will help you in your covert teenage years when you have to really get undercover. Yeah. Come on, Breen. You got to go to bed. Come on, Breen. You want me to walk you to your room? Come on, I'll walk you up. Check Here, that you, closet, you, dude. I've got it handled. Yeah, you take over for a little. Yeah. But what I was going to say is I noticed in all the Henders and my Malibus, and I don't think my Slim Midi had them, but American manufacturers use, which there's nothing wrong with this. I don't, I'm not a bearing expert, but stainless steel bearings as opposed to um, ceramic bearings which my understanding is ceramics better. I don't know why I think that probably because Kevin told me, but, um, and they're also stainless steel rings. The thing that interested me about the Malibu is it has washers in each side of this aluminum scale and the washers were even undersized. So you could put probably a, I'm not good at measurements, but if you were looking at the, diameter you could have probably added a 16th inch to the washer so it would have filled the little carve out or the mill out for the washer slash bearing but i was amazed because i've had this knife for years but this was my second malibu so i probably only flipped this 50 times maybe 100 um and there was no track I flipped my washers and I could tell no discerning difference except one side was a little bit crowned, the smooth side. So I just left them like they were, skipped it up and went from there. And then I for finally got a knife in to look at today. Are y'all familiar with Mr. Mr. Designs? I did a review and I bought this knife because I think, I think Kevin reviewed it. Somebody reviewed it. Super thin, full size, best tech OEM'd knife they make it in a tanto this is a cipher and they make a cipher d which is a drop point and he does this other real radical minimalistic knife that i think kevin also featured and probably led me to buy but this is the zero little minimalistic button lock with an m390 blade but again super thin so miha and i'm mispronouncing his name is one of the two the son there's also a dad um, who owns Mr. Mr. Designs or runs it. They're designers. And he sent me actually via Wayne, Wayne's World or Wayne Sharp, um, this Phantom that just, he's got them. He bought them. He took the money from the Cypher and the money from the uh, Zero, and he got, he's got these in stock now on Mr. Mr. Design's site. But this is a little bit smaller. To me, it's about, because I looked, I did the unboxing today. It'll go up tomorrow, but it's about a sixteenth inch shorter than the bug out. Titanium scales, OEM by QSP, super thin blade stock, super nice hollow grind. The plunge terminates right about there, so you've got plenty of sharpenings. And this thing is just a slicer. Have you seen this uh, Phantom yet? This Mister Mister Designs Phantom. No, I asked him if he could send me one to check out. He said he would get me on a pass around or something. Well, reach out to him and see if I can send you this when I'm done because this came to me via Wayne, uh, Wayne yeah, Sharp. Yeah, I'm probably on. I asked him like the other day, so I'm probably on whatever list that is. Because I'm planning on sending this back to him. I told him I'd try to get it to him quick because I didn't realize until I messaged him tonight that it came in today and how much I liked it because I like it better than my. I bought this Cypher after your review. Yeah, I like this. I don't do really I don't do flipper only, and I bought the titanium scales, dude, for like sixty five bucks. Looks I've still nice. got my carbon fiber scales, but then I also bought because you reviewed it and influenced me because that's what you do. That one's cool. I just had dude. like button stick on all the prototypes I handled, but mine's like perfect. But these are two knives I would have never bought a year ago because I would have never bought two flipper only knives within a month of each other. I don't I think really, I ever posted a video on that knife because I kept getting ones with button stick. It was weird. Maybe I saw it somewhere else. But I would but get it from, I would get it from whoever, and that they would say there was no stick. He would say there was no stick. I'd send it back to him. He'd be like, "There's no stick." But when I had it, it would have stick. So did weird. you take I think it apart? That was still at my old house. It's so easy to take apart. It's so clean. I mean, yeah, I yeah, love the it way. Looks sick. Yeah, it's I really great. like that knife. But this one's smaller, and it really kind of excited me. They make it in black, 20 CV, 
QSP OE in this one, but look at that front flipper. And I hate front flippers. I use the studs all day yeah, long. Yeah, how right? is that front flipper? It looks really pokey. Dude, it's not pokey at all. Yep. It's, uh, well, I mean, I guess if you call it, because you hated the Leong Ma one, right? This is not a Teletubby, but it's just, it's not as, for example, if you look at the way your Lush kind of goes into the natural contour of the handle, so it yeah, doesn't look as, idea. it's totally low, yeah. But this is, is one it? of the few knives I can do this on real easily because it's, you can't fail it. It's like a bigger version of that. It's like yeah. a bigger No, I've always thought it looked interesting. So, uh, yeah, I asked him to check. I should have asked him like months ago to check. But one for out. me, but for me, I, I could have left it off. But that's why I say if you want to just reach out to him, I can send you this. I mean, I, will, I already did. He knows I want to check it out. So he'll, you know, I don't know. I'm sure I if he thought that, that, he would have. Steve, I can't it, make up my mind. Cool. Titanium or carbon tall boy. I have the carbon one I've been carrying um i gotta clean this because i did some uh cardboard slicing to test it out and it did really well on it um the only thing i'm worried about with these is the lock bar access if there's too much so i sent one along to stasa with his fireball prototypes to those get look damn machine. good today on instagram yeah yeah so he's gonna do some cut testing with the tall boy and let us know if it Cause like if I do this, you know, I can disengage it, but I'm like, I'm trying to do it. If I'm right. just squeezing down, I'm not. So I don't know, but I Have think spine whack it yet. Spine whack. Why would I? I'm, spine kidding. Whack it? I'm kidding. That was a joke. Don't spine Man, whack it. I don't, that, don't, I don't spine whack, whack it. Shit. Please don't spine whack it. That was a bad joke. Um, the one thing I couldn't get your attention on or you were ignoring me the other night during your live is I wanted to look at that lock closer up because I've never really seen anything like that. It looks you like know, something I've seen on a ZT, but I don't look at it. That's what I was up. thinking because I was trying to think, like, does it look like anything? Because we it always doesn't really. Get, whenever we come out with a new design, I always go, what are people going to say we copied? Because, like, dude, you know, I wasn't they always do that. that. It looks totally to think, unique. Like, what looks like that? And I was thinking maybe, like, Kershaw bar bare knuckle or something. Or, Some people said the blade looks like an MSI. I don't see that at all. But it's what, what and I didn't see it that it looked like anything. To me, it looked unique. And I was trying to make myself mentally remember because I've seen something that looks like it depresses, but I never watched you depress it. That's the buzz, right? Right. So it's kind of like a buzz. And I think the way Colin did it. When he designed this, is John. Ian's usually around. He's always in Tri-State Live. I can get you. Uh, let me see if I've got his Instagram handle. Go ahead, so, Brian. What Colin did was, I think he took the nip blade and then just like pulled it and stretched it out. That's how he ended up here. Yeah, so I see that take, in the hole now. If you take this. If it was like elastic and you just, I think that's how it would kind of shape out. But I mean, it falls right in line with all our shit, basically. Well, it's a, like you said the other night, it's a larger knife, more of a full size knife. And yep, three and a half inch, uh, eight inch overall. I know two of my good buddies here won't carry anything smaller. I mean, I bring them the greatest knives. And unless it's a yeah. quiet carry Drift XL or a Roosevelt XL, they're just not the in. Lock bar. Hey, it's Coach. You're right, Jim. I was just pulling it up. So that's uh, is that an actual lock bar that mounts to the? Is it a, nope. a liner? So, as far as I can tell, from what they did, they just took a thick ass piece of steel and milled it down into a liner. So and it's almost like a, a, a hybrid frame lock. Like, it's I can't even out. find, I was looking for a seam where maybe they, like, welded this on to the liner. I couldn't find anything. And especially if you look, like, right in this area, you can't see where, like, there would be a seam right here. This is all connected. To me, it looks like a, almost some kind of weird variation of a frame lock because of its thickness. I mean, if you look at locks, yeah, no, it's, uh, strength. I mean, I think I would call it a, 
exposed liner lock. I don't. I, I, don't I think know. it's something different. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it it had a look of something that was I don't vaguely know how familiar. Kershaw does it. I haven't looked at it since I thought maybe like because I was trying it again. I was like, what would it look like? And then I was like, yeah, it kind of does maybe ZT, but once you get the carbon fiber, it gives you those vibes, which, by the way, uh, MASH hardware fits. So the MASH pivot collars fit, and the pivot fit, the stop pin fit, the body screws fit. So some of the hardware is actually interchangeable. I thought it looked cool with satin on here. Matching and the this. MASH 2.0s and 2.5s are fully compatible. You can make a blondie and a blackout right. too. I think all satin, even on the clip, would would really look good on this model because of that. So my question yeah, is: Is the lock that. bar access to match the cutout where that lock bar is? If you look at the scales, does that make them? What am I saying? Symmetrical? Is that why you have so much lock bar? Because that's where the lock bar would sit if it was reversed. Um. Yeah. I think that's what Colin was doing. You'd have to ask him exactly. But well, so, I know he innovates. That's why I asked about the lock. What and usually I, happens is we do a design, he'll mock it up, we'll get prototypes. And the first thing I will say is we need more lock bar access. So on this one, when we were designing it, I'm pretty sure I just said just add more because we always end up adding more. Like it gets a little, it was getting a little frustrating where every time we get a prototype, it's like, okay, we got to add more in production. So on this one, we added more before we did it. And maybe we added too much. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not saying that. I, I'm well, thinking the reason I probably... don't like it is when you look at it close with this satin blade, you can see the belt satin right here. And I feel like it might look better if that was brought up a little bit so you didn't see all of that area here and i'd have to see how much log bar access you have but it's you definitely don't dude. need you definitely don't need that much to get the stud to get to the thumb flick you would be like, better served to have less here's my finger cut out yeah you would have a lot because a good example is i mean i can measure it my best thumb stud knives the thumb stud comes very close to the scale like the dachshund which I don't have out here from Vosteed or my bug out because you can just pop it by putting your thumb there. You don't have to, ha you don't have that gap between the scale and the stud. So, so point, I think you have plenty of room to open it. 0.23 inches of lock bar access in that area, like right in the middle where that, where this indents to the, like straight down is 0.2 inches of lock bar access this is like five almost six millimeters so if i take let's say this berg blades which uh, this doesn't have any honestly it's just Dude, kind of scallop this is back. the best this is the best knife i traded my full size uh berg blade sweeney because i Most knew this knives, was coming out honestly a lot of knives don't have any yeah dude the mini is sick the full size was sick. It was just larger than I found myself carrying. And I'm trying so, to not keep it. I think we'd all agree the MASH has plenty of lock bar access, right? Absolutely. It's done very well. So. You didn't the MASH, choose the V2, did you? You're looking at. Two point seven three millimeters. So even if we round that up to three millimeters, the tall boy has double the lock bar access. Yeah, I think you, pro you probably didn't say that consciously to Colin. He probably just got tired of every time one came back here and you bitch oh, about it. No, no, no. It. I, I, I said it. Like, I know we talked about it. We were like, let's just add more now instead of, you know what I mean? And it kind of works with the design. I have a little medium sized hand. So I totally agree that a lot of people would like the OG size better. And I ironically like the pair of two so much better than the pair of three, but the mini Sweeney for me, it's even smaller than my mini areas, but I love this little knife. This little knife is just a gentleman's folder extraordinaire. And it's so 
fidgety and mine's got a blacked out blade so it's not as fidgety as my original one was because it hadn't worn in yet beer is as gay as pro improper retreat Green it is, theory. dude, but I used to believe me. When I was in Chicago with a head full of things that shouldn't have been in my head, it was a lot of fun. Banging around the city, throwing up green shit. I looked like the Joker. Yeah, we're gonna come out with it. What do you mean by, like, high-end? I mean, I think the Stout V2 is pretty high-end. I mean, I you mean, like, a CNC custom? That would have to be a U.S.-made CNC custom knife. I mean... That's tough for somebody like us to come out with. It's more for people who are making them. But, I mean, we're working on a U.S.-made uh, premium growler with Chapman Lake. But, you know, we're, that's in its infancy. We're still gauging all that. Hopefully it works out. I guess that would count. I mean, you're yeah, just talking well, Chapman, basically. He's saying U.S.-made, I guess. I don't know. Because Chapman Lake's. Even though they're new, they have manufacturing capabilities, I feel, from talking to them and seeing their work, that far exceed what a lot of the U.S., and nothing against them, because the U.S. are doing things that they do better. But I think Chapman Lakes can build a more refined, in the way I think of a refined knife, more refined than, say, this, no shame intended. But I think Chapman Lakes is a great person to partner and learn to do that with. Um, Devo makes awesome knives. Will Devo ever come out with a? Okay, we answered that. Yeah, I mean, give me define high end for me. I'm reading that as USA made CNC small batch, like a brown Cortex or something. Um, or maybe like a Steve Skiff collaboration, yeah. 18, 1900. I want so there's a uh, there's a bit driver that I want to work on. I've been talking to my buddy O dot Show over in uh, where is he from? Ukraine, I think. But um, he sent me this 3D printed uh, bit driver, and Colin and I have been working on a bit driver design for a while called the Bit Bomb. And basically, the driver kind of looks like a bo a bomb, like a missile sits into the stand and then the stand you have the bits all around it that looks like shrapnel so call it the bit bomb right but so the bits kind of angle out a little bit in their holes exactly yeah yeah so we have a we have a, a company that makes drivers i mean just infer here you guys can figure it out they're working on a prototype for that one um but then Scott. show sent me this and i love this design so i talked to him about i was like do you want to do this like together as a collab and he's down for it so i got the cad files and everything for it and i sent them over to that oem to see what we could do but then i was thinking maybe we could get it made here i don't know how much that's the problem i worry about is like if we get it made here Nobody's buying a $200 bit driver if that's what it's like. I don't know what it would cost for us to have it made. I did. I shot a message over to Tactile. I haven't heard back. I was thinking, you know, they have lathes. They make pens. Like, you'd think they'd be able to spit out some bit drivers. Yeah, I think uh, your cost of production would be a lot less. And I paid $170 for an imported bit driver. So, yeah. yeah. But I, don't, I wouldn't want to, you know me. Like, we wouldn't yeah, want to sell so it depends but anyway this driver is super cool so it has a obviously a bearing in the back this is 3d printed we have so be like. devious and then the cool thing about it is it's super comfortable in hand because it has very round ergonomic lines it's a great size and then it has this section right here that threads off and you have another driver and magnet in here so let's say you're working on something and you, all of a sudden you need two drivers. You technically could then use this kind of like a finger bit, right? Yeah. And have two drivers on you. Or at the very least, you have storage for one extra here. Or you have like a mini. Now you have a stubby, you know? It's very 
innovative. I mean, it gives you something that no other one that I've seen does. Exactly. It gives you a lot of options. And then the base, I couldn't figure this out when he first sent it to me. You actually stand it upside down. Looks like a little saucer on a launch pad, yeah. And it looks cool. And if you set it down, like, you can spin it, and it's not knocking it over or anything. And then this has, like, a sick... This is basically like a fidget spinner, too. Is that 3D printed, or is it... Yeah. He had a titanium one prototyped over some machine shop he has near him. Looks really good. Um, but they're not going to make like a bunch of them or anything. He but just I think got your lead like, time yes. is a lot less expensive than doing using a five axis mill. I think right. the cost, but I don't know because flashlights are expensive. So maybe I'm wrong there. It just seems but to they me. They have a I'm lot like, of like extra milling after then the, you have the electronics that go in and everything. So I don't know. But anyway, He's up for it. I we want to do it as a Devo thing, and it would I'm basically not, just be like a it would be like a licensed uh, design. It'd be his design, kind of like our Fireball. Except I think with the Fireball, we're gonna just split it with Nick. I'm not sure how that's happening yet, but this is strategic partnership. I mean, I yeah. think right now I've got one, two, three, four, five drivers that I can see, and I'll probably buy more. And I don't need more. I don't need anything more than that. I but basically cool have ever, three now. Like, I, I usually, I stopped collecting them really. Like, and then I would always sell them. Like, I have this set from Get Good Screw. This is my go-to. That's my go-to, too. You sold me this one. Yeah. I love that one. That one get a lot of torque. It's really nice. But I just don't need that many. So I have this one, and then I have the two in my, in my disassembly kit. The two audacious concepts. And I think... This driver that we would do would compete really well with the Audacious Concepts driver. How much is that? I forget. These are like, great. They're like, they're like 90 bucks or something. Yeah, 90 bucks. Do you still have a Weha study around? If I you think they're it? made, they, it's hard to tell if they're made in Finland or Denmark or if they're made in China. They don't, it's hard for, to gauge. Sorry, what were you saying? I just don't see it that labor intensive. Do you still own a stubby? Yeah, yeah. We the stubby, I mean, that doesn't count for me. No, the it doesn't. Stubby is, the, driver. Somebody the, stubby in the, is chat. the go to for torque. You have to have one of these. And if you were just going to get an inexpensive driver to get started up, what's up, Palmer? That'd be a great one to start with. That's what I started and with. Technically, I have this too. Yeah, I've got a finger bit too. The one which I, I would recommend today. if you're trying to get a one and done bit driver that's a little nicer i really do recommend that combat beads one that white one there because it can be used to spin but it also has it's thick enough and has enough grip that you can really torque on it can you grab that white one again yeah that's the one i'm talking about i don't have one anymore but i, I like that the would white be one, like my but i would buy i would pay the extra for the, uh, yeah, it doesn't spin too get well. Good well, that doesn't matter because it doesn't need that's to. It spins it's fine in your for. hand. Yeah, it spins fine, exactly. fine in your hand, and it's got a thick barrel, which gives you that torque exactly. that Lefty's talking about, and it's got really nice knurling, and it's G10, so it's not as cold. I think yeah, it gives you, you better traction. It comes in anything. So that's the one I would recommend to anybody who's like, I just want a one-and-done driver that can do everything. That's really a tough one to beat. Yeah, it's great. Hey, Betty. I'm talking about an eight hundred dollar knife. Well, that's the thing, dude. I don't want to sell you an eight hundred dollar knife. I'll get that knife made and I'll sell it to you for five or six. Like, why, well, why sell it? Like, what, I would literally that? just be selling it to you for eight because I want to make the extra three hundred bucks. I'm like, that's not what I want to do. Or you may we want get a knife made material. in the U.S. to really good quality. CNC small batch style and sell it to you for 600 bucks. I think we can do that. It's just a matter of finding the right partner from talking to Chapman Lake pricing wise, we're going to be able to sell those for, for five or six. And if they're as good as the ones we got from Shank, they're worth it. They're fucking worth it. Trust me. So, but we got to get it done. You know, it's like, 
I, I, I'm just not like, I'm not banking on that shit anymore. Cause this what's is our their, third what's try. Their volume? Like, it's just, you know, we'll see. Are they I'm selling 10 a month? Are they selling 20 a month? Do you have any idea? Have they shared that with you? How, what their capacity is right now compared to what they five is not high. Well, dude, you got to look at the knife, not the price. Just here, dude. Like you, I mean, you I'll could put. You know what? I got an eight hundred dollar knife. I got a high end knife right here in the box. I'm gonna sell you a Mash V two point five, eight hundred bucks. Hit me up. I'll invoice you. Now you have a now you have a high end knife. The price doesn't mean shit to me. It's the quality of the knife. I mean, some of these OEMs make stuff for two hundred bucks that blows away hinderers and CRK and shit. What would real are, nice Damasteel if somebody was thinking on the other side of a computer, but I'm thinking Damasteel and Damascus like, if added to a, a, a growler. What would that add dollar wise? Like 300 bucks, like 400 so bucks? Like See again, dude. I, I really think. I mean, I, I'm that knife that we got made by Shank was. It's right there, dude. It really is. I mean, it doesn't have some weird mechanism or anything like Craig Brown's shit. Like, but we're not after that. Like, a good bolster lock, honestly, to me, is the best option for the way I like to use my knives, fidget with my knives, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know. I, I get what you're saying. I'm just kind of trying to, you know, if you take that same knife like we've done dude that same knife that we did with shank i sent that exact file over to kubi and got this made this is the same exact file of course they adjusted it a little bit they actually improved some things changed some things i think if we ended up doing this which hopefully we're not we're planning on having it again done here um i think we'll probably adjust some stuff like the inlays we had enough people want the inlays shaped differently or whatever i i do think that would look better um but like this is that knife just made in china does that that doesn't make it high end right because it's made in china it's not high end that's like so i get where you're going with it hopefully I'm just, I don't think I'm ever going to sell you an $800 knife because I don't want to sell you an $800 knife. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to price something at $800 just because I don't think it needs to be priced at $800 is what I'm saying. To be a great knife for what you're designing. If, if Craig, like, so I'm not saying Craig Brown is overpricing his knives. He's making those himself in his shop. That's not who we would have made. Like, we're not going to have that because those people aren't making knives for other people. And we're not making our own knives like that. We just don't have those skills. I'm not going to say never, but so we're going to be using a shop that has more ca capability that's going to be able to make more to where we're going to not have to sell it for $800. All right, I'll shut we up. We still have a great knife. And squirrel brain here on that. And thank uh, you for the question, dude. I, I I'm not trying to like, I don't know. I'm just trying to answer the question the best I can. What's up, Chef? On that. Thank you, uh, JD. Appreciate that you, buddy. You and reviewed that has the magnetic inserts. You know what I'm talking about the axle fixed blade. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Does that um? Do you think that would translate into a folding knife design? I know that uh, Pyrotech or whatever they're called does it. Have you ever thought about? That would actually be pretty cool, but you'd have to have steel liners under it. Okay, to make it stick to it? Yeah, I mean, unless you, like, mill little pockets and put magnets all over the place. But yeah, that kind of the, the thing with this, the thing with magnets is, you know, it can be tricky. I guess they have it housed in there enough, but, like, what if and I had... And sticking on the tang, right? So you're not getting any extra thickness. So, like... Are any of these, these are probably all ah, titanium. No, so like here, 
if you had small enough stuff, if you're working in a shop with this knife, ah, you're, you're gonna, gonna be have, sucking even even with the magnets underneath. You're gonna have like if you have metal shavings, if this screw is sticking on here, yeah, gonna dark gravity is gonna walk around and look way. like an etch a sketch after and he walks on the steel mill. Imagine it being a folder. Now you're gonna have all this shit inside the knife. I don't yeah, know if it translates. Point. I don't know if it translates to a pocket knife. I think this works because you're going to be gripping it. And I'm, not everybody has that in, environment. But no, but we know somebody who does. Dark gravity I, works in know, steel mill. I'd rather I'd rather throw a couple screws in there and be sure it's locked in. That kind of stuff to me is like some of that stuff is cool, but it's like do I really want to do it? And is the market going to respond to it to where is it a problem where you're getting a bunch of calls about people saying I look like an etch a sketch because I've got metal dust all over me? Or is it, you know, is it worth it? I don't know. But I'd focus on the shit. Did you call the sub frame lock or was that different? I don't know. What are we talking about? I think about he's there? talking about your knife, maybe. Or the maybe he's talking about bolster lock. Is that what they call a sub frame lock? Uh, I don't know what I don't know if ZT or whatever has a name for it. I think they call it a sub frame lock, but that's not what this is because this is literally a liner lock where the scale is milled out, cut out, and then the liner is made super thick to take up the space. So it's an exposed liner lock. That's but isn't it also it operates you... like a frame lock in the sense that if I put my finger on it, it makes it harder to, to fire out. Like if I put my thumb here and try to thumb flick, you know, like I can't. Right. Because I'm on the lock bar. So it has lock bar pressure or whatever, but it's only that one little area there. And it would only stand to reason that it's going to lock up stronger than a traditional liner lock because it's a thicker material. Right. Sure, and technically, I guess you can put pressure down on it, unlike a liner lock, where you're adding to that strength of the lock, you know. But yeah, I mean, basically, if you took the mash and you just cut out this portion right here, and then instead of that piece being titanium, it was just the liner being thicker, that's what it is. Filling up that we went through a bunch when we were doing the the like design stuff. We sent it all to Kubi, and then it was like there was so many options. They originally we kind of asked them to take a titanium plate and mount it to the liner, but they didn't. I, I think that wasn't going to be feasible structurally, or just wasn't going to look good. There was an exposed screw or something. And then there was like another way they were going to do it. And that there's like all these different ways it was going to happen. I totally, by the time we were waiting for the prototypes, I forgot like what we ended up on. And apparently what we ended up on was just, they took the liner and they left this portion super thick. I don't know. I mean, maybe they welded it on and I just can't. Have you taken it apart? What? Have you taken it apart? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a video coming where I go over the knife. I take it apart because I know people are going to want to know. Well, what's weird, what makes me wonder There's no is, screw. There's no anything. So there's no way to switch it to a left-handed knife if the cutouts happen to be the same on the scale. You couldn't flip uh, that. Ooh. That's kind of a thought. You know, if people looking for left-handed knives, if you had a way to mount that inside the scale... Where it could be switched? Yeah, but it wouldn't work because the blade has to have lockup geometry. I don't. It wouldn't work. Yeah, because of the detent. Yeah, well, like the oh, yeah, way the close. tang and the, the blade the is angle. cut yeah. on an angle, yeah, you. to to meet up with it, so it wouldn't work. But that's a I great idea. Um, it's a cool idea, anyway. Uh, well, it's yeah. funny because Lefty is brilliant, but if you watched him two years ago take shit apart, you wouldn't think he'd be here today. But you did trial by fire. That's the best oh, way to so learn this, anything. I mean, this was Colin. Yeah, you know, this was his idea. 
Um, I'll take credit for the uh, the backspacer on the fireball. That was my idea. So on this, the way we made it reversible is we were just including a separate backspacer. So like this is set up left. This is a right-handed knife. If I can flick it. It's a right-handed knife, right? But the clip is lefty right now. And you can't even tell that it's a right handed Had a right handed knife. option because you just looks like that. a lefty clip knife only, right? So, what you do, I don't know if I, I might have sent it to, nope. So, what you do is you unscrew this, you unscrew that, you take the clip off. This backspacer will come off the knife and then you put this one on mount it on and the carbon fiber and the liners are tapped for this clip on both sides but you can't see it you can't see it because this is covering it right so when i put this one on now you have your clip spot over here and now you have a right-handed knife. So basically, cool. the backspacer dictates if it's lefty or righty. And does that backspacer, when it failed, it sound like it was aluminum or metal? It's titanium. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. We added speed holes and milling this time just to give it some, I don't know, a little something. I think it looks good. Yeah, I think it looks really good. You need to clip in a little bit so there's no wiggle at all now. Um, the only thing I want to do is add another screw right here on both sides because it's just not to have the Jaeger issue to have the balance. Well, no, it's the uh, this it sits up a little bit on some you got of a little them. displacement, but the balance thing uh, bothered me enough not to buy the Jaeger three, right? That's the thing Ford. is. You know, on this, we'll have to put the screw probably right there. And it'll just be symmetric on both sides. And yeah. it'll be both backspacers, whatever. And it's a black screw. Like, we didn't do what he did where it's satin on, like, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. Sore thumb. This is just black. You can barely even see the screw. It's not a big deal. But that's going to make it more flush here because it'll pull that down. Because that's the issue we had. That's why we initially we didn't even have this screw. Because we it thought just locked could, in. We, yeah, we thought, thought it would lock in. Mill it well enough that it would sit flush, but it doesn't. And now it sits flush down there, but not here. So we got to add that little bit more. Not that you're going to change anything, but if they were titanium scales, would would it sit flush? Do you think the metal would make a difference from the flex and the carbon fiber? Nah, you still probably need not, the screw? I don't think it has anything to do with the material. I think it's just the fact that you don't have screws holding anything down. You need you need to pull that down. Yeah. Cornered, I hear it's you loud not, and clear. It's not thick enough to have a screw go through. and I know somebody's right. going to mention that. It's not thick enough for that. But yeah, these are these are looking really good. Nice hollow yeah. grind. It's super thin. This thing's sick. And totally unique. I mean, it doesn't look like anything. Yeah, when we first started working on it, I thought it had a little bit of a Towser K look. But um, that went away quickly. I don't, I don't really see that. Maybe it was yeah, his. Maybe it was his initial that. his initial sketch. Maybe looked a little Towser K ish. I don't remember. This is like so. Nick gave us a sketch, like a, a good sketch drawing, and then Colin took it from there. So think, you know, think stout. Where I drew a fucking, you know, his drawing was obviously way better than mine, but then Colin like fleshes it out. So it's definitely a collaboration, but. The silhouette, the the idea, you know, behind it was definitely from Nick. And then we kind of went from there. I think we, you know, we all kind of decided to do the pivot. And then I came up with the backspacer thing because we were just trying to figure out a way to do a reversible clip. 
Anthony Corn and Palmer, you guys are making me laugh because I did when I was a drinker. Fireball was something that was I don't mention it because it was so horrible, but it was sworn off my list before I turned 21. I had it come well, out my nose with such velocity. They used to call me Sprinkler Head because I saw you said your brother pukes a lot. I was a guy that would sit in the bar, drink, for drink walk outside, get sick. I don't know where you can get it. Drink. Urban ADC had them. I don't even know what they call that thing anymore. It's the combat beads. Least- that's right. Combat beads. Dryer. Yeah, that's Griff. That's the Griffin Company. Let me pull them up because I've got their knives too. It Hold was on, like a like... collaboration with people, and it was a whole thing. He has a different version now out there, and then Urban EDC sells it, but I think they're all sold out of it. I guess it is kind of dumb to tell you to go buy it, and then let's see if Gr- yeah, he has them in stock. Looks like he has yeah, natural like Micarta yeah. for a hundred bucks. Here, I'll throw the link in the chat for the driver. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of dumb to mention. Uh, where did you guy love it? Let me just read through a bunch of shit real quick. Or did you already get all these? Uh, no, I was just reading the ones that I was laughing at. Should get shielded. In. Oh, fuck that, dude. Uh, He's got G10, too, in stock. What you got? Well said, Kev. Don't know what I said, but... Uh, we were talking about the CNC thing. Uh, Super Steel, premium material, action and performance. 800 doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Stout V2 is fucking sick, man. I, I Honestly, I would put the Stout V2 against any, like, Hinderer, Chris Reeve, Medford, fucking. I would put it against any of those. Tactile, it would crush, I think. And yeah, the materials are. It's not going to beat an Arius. I'll give you that. It's not going to beat you know, uh, a a brown custom. It's you know, I would argue it beats a Herman, but I don't. I just don't like Herman pointy ass flipper tabs, and uh, it's just not my style. But the quality I get. Uh, yeah, and the stout's a fantastic knife because I told you early on I wasn't a fan of the look, but after yeah. experiencing it, it's just. I mean, it's on another level. I think it's on another level from the buzz. So here's the thing, John. I feel like we're kind of doing similar things. Like we're trying to do this kind of like not it's not like a maker series, but work with people and, you know, get like Nick's design is is with the fireball, the spit driver with ODOT show. So like it's kind of the same thing. So. I mean, it could work, but it doesn't really make sense. And again, why would I work with CKF? I can get that knife made and sell it to you for four hundred dollars made from in China. the same OEM. They're selling it for eight. Why would I do that? Just to, and you wait an extra just ten to give, just to get ten percent from them and have them overprice it. It just doesn't make sense. Like that Rotten Evo I got, that lefty, that was a $700 knife at least. And that thing felt like, I mean, it felt like a $300 best tech made knife. Now, when they do the cool versions with Zerkutai and it it pimps it out a bit, when they do a design like this, I'm not too upset about the $700 I spent on this. But this has a skeletonized titanium frame, you know, sub frame lock with these awesome CF scales, these pivot inlays. You know what I mean? It's a it's a freaking whatever his name is design, the Zerkutai clip. Um, that is more apparent. But you give me an Evo, that's a fucking stout without inlays. Like take a stout, belt satin, premium materials titanium frame you, you, take care, the, Lord. you take the fat carbon off out of the equation lord did, did you get your like, uh, let's just say we package. did it as a frame lock that's a 350 dollars knife it's a 300 dollars knife without the fat carbon and if we switch to s90b i could sell you that for 325 it's fucking plain titanium and a belt satin hollow grind best tech can do that for 300 bucks and that was a 700 dollar knife 
And you guys I mean, got to keep in mind, sweet Lord, you guys have to keep in mind, too, that there's the supply and demand thing can be. And I'm not saying anybody does this. I'm just stating an objective fact. It can be manipulated by supply, right? So Dude, if you get when they a do design, those plain Janes, they're fucking killing. They're paying 150 bucks tops to get that made. Right. And, and they're but, selling but they, it to you for seven hundred dollars. I paid it. And, and, I'm, I'm and, fucking foolish too. I'm just saying. And people are waiting an amazing amount of time. So and you're waiting fucking yeah, 15 months. And, and and I can see how a lot of people don't want to build a model like that, but at the same time, maybe there's a reason. I, I can't logically think of one, but that they can only do so many. If it was their plant. Maybe, but you know, you know, they could order more, and the price would then not be as desirable Yo, because you see them in stock. Looks like a sub frame lock difference would be it being a liner instead of the frame. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's cool, is what it is. Um, nested liner lock. No, nah, nested liner lock would be different. That would be honestly more like a mash because a mash. There's nested liners, and then uh, there's actually only the lock bar mounted in there. So, like, you don't have a liner on this side. You just have the lock bar mounted down here. So this and that's is something else I've never seen. When I switched out my mass V1 and, or V2 and 2.5, I've never seen a liner kind of partially press fit in there because oh, yeah. i had to do a little tweaking on my blondie but I've, i mean it it just seemed like a very neat design it seemed like a fresh way to do a lock bar in a titanium scales and thin the knife down and keep the weight down Ian, i'm over the nip now. <laughs> i've got Is three you, mean, so you had one and you don't like it anymore or you had fomo and now you're over it or what nips for life we have the budget ones come. Oh, I showed you guys the other day uh, the prototypes for the budget ones. And um, I showed you how Kubi fucked up the Hawk Bills. I don't know if you guys remember that. I saw anyway. something you posted where you looked like you've really fucked one up on a sharpener, but I couldn't tell if that was your doing. Uh, let me pull it up for you. Took so many pictures of the tall boy and fireball because I always forget to. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, here. So this is what they did on the prototypes. They basically took the blade, went halfway, and then started the recurve and turned yeah, it. Yeah, they put a little recurve in there too. Yuck. It's supposed to have a recurve. It's a hawk yeah. mill. Yeah, I'll pass. But I'm sure some people will love it. We also have the regular blade shape too. We're doing both, which is why, thank you for the feedback. We're probably gonna do like two thirds of them regular and one third Hawkbill just to try. I do it. a quarter, three quarters. But anyway, uh, okay. Just me. I mean, I'm. I'm but not... uh, this is how we drew it up, where that recurve goes throughout, and you get the Hawkbill. It looks way better. Yeah, so it does. I emailed them that night, Thursday, Friday morning. I got an email from Kubi. Hey, uh, here's the here's the fixed ones. They did it overnight. They fixed it. And that's not easy to do on a short blade. That's not an easy knife to. That's fuck fucking with. impressive. That in a in a day, all they had to do was remove material. Luckily, no diesel. But still. So those prototypes are on the way. Those are budget nips. I'm calling it the nip light, I think. You know, like Miller light or Bud light, nip light. Uh, that was it was either that or diet nip, but that that's not, it doesn't sound alcohol related. Um, I'm which, trying to come up with nipple references and I we can't. We did this I mean, already. The cheap nip, we, we already thought of all this. Um, the trailer yeah, those part are on part. the way to me. So we're probably going to do a budget run of nips in the near future. Hopefully we can sell those for like a hundred bucks, 120 tops. Probably not. Probably a hundred. 
I gotta see the pricing, but I have the mash. It's sweet. Hell yeah, dude. Uh three hundred dollar knife can't hold it. Yes, it can, dude. I mean, that's all preference. I would take so many three hundred dollar knives over a Herman, but you know, that's me. But you're the other way. So that's fair. Dollar ballpark will fireball be in. So I was talking to Nick today, actually, right before this. And uh, it looks like he wants to do S90V. Um, so the goal then would be 199 or less. S90V, camo carbon, titanium backspacer, and hardware. Steve. Felt satins, you know, all the good stuff. Um, Probably 199 or less. And then, you know, you always have the 10% codes and shit. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm waiting on Kubi to send me quotes for the tall boy and the fireball right now. So that's subject to change. But if I remember correctly from when we started the project, it was more, it was a bit more expensive than like a nip or a premium pony that are in S90V just because there's, there's more like design details with that backspacer and all that kind of shit. And JD, so, I'll agree that the Devo's or uh, the uh, detent's better on the Padre uh, than on the Evo. Say that again. Um, JD for EDC prefers his Padre over the Evo. And I think oh, the, the Padre Evo. has the best said Evo. Um, Evo, but yeah, I think the Padre I mean, has one of the best one, that's the thing. If you get a good one, the Evo is money. But apparently it's hard, you know, it's hit or miss with getting a good one. Also, the Padre, if you watch my video, the one I got was the detent was soft on mine. Was it lefty or was it a Yeah, it was lefty. I adjusted it and it was better after, but uh it did come soft. But the knife otherwise was like, you know, so that's really just a preference thing. My Evo is like fucked up. Have you seen that cleaver they're coming out with? How it much looks kind of the kind of the come was coming out with two backspace. Yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, BT is once I get the quote from Kubi, I'm gonna decide on that. If it's like a couple dollars to add the lefty backspacer, then we'll just throw one in every box. If it's like five to ten bucks per backspacer, I'll probably just order like fifty or a hundred, and then file we'll cheese. Them. And if no, if somebody's lefty, they can hit us up. We'll send you. We won't sell them. We'll send it to you, but we just won't include one with every knife, depending on the cost. Because there's only going to be there's going to I know already there's going to be thirty to forty people that want one. So, so it's not worth it's not worth spending. You know what's uh what's ten bucks times three hundred? Let's say we do three hundred. That's three grand. Three grand. It's not worth three grand if I'm only gonna end up having five hundred dollars worth of those be used, right? But if it's a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks to include one with every knife, we'll do it. So that's gonna be TBD, but um. Yeah, that's the answer to that. Technically, with that backspace, you can switch up the handle design also if the blade has clearance. True. You could put different blades in there. Uh, just use a filler tab. should be cheaper and pull down the backspace. Pull down the backspace. What do you mean pull it down? I don't know what you mean by pull it down. I mean, it's not, like, the only reason we wanted it. Like, it, this is cool. <laughs> Having different. a wraparound backspacer is cool. Also, if you notice, it's not contoured because of the wraparound backspacer. They can't contour it. But because of the wraparound backspacer, you don't have what you traditionally have, which is, like, open open frame so it's just as comfortable as a contoured knife because you have that rounded 
all of this is nicely chamfered and everything and it just kind of melts into your hand so it's just a different way of designing a knife which is cool like yeah sure we could have just slapped a filler tab on it but that wouldn't have been as sweet and then it also wouldn't look as clean right if you get a right hand in one of these it's even better because you have this pivot over here and then you just have this right because you can't switch the pivot good point right that is one thing you can't switch the pivot but whatever i'm a lefty. i want to do a review on that uh kaiser october 101 prototype i won from knees and they did something really weird on it they've got a captive pivot but the show side has the bit on it and the lock side has the smooth pivot what knife it's a prototype it's then they changed it i'm sure there's the old prototype of a kaiser with contour scales october but the way they set it up was that the finished pivot would be on the lock side because of where the captive pivot is on the scale it was bizarre i thought i'd be able to flip it when i put skiffs in it and i couldn't uh salty uh, this is not like i'm not trying to be argumentative but if people don't like the hump we have 12 other knives that you can buy i mean that's just that's part of the design you know what i mean we're not gonna remove the hump and make a whole nother blade shape just for you know people who don't like humps you know what i mean we have other knives maybe like on a future version or something that makes sense but um yeah we wouldn't do like a no hump and a hump version on the first run you know what i mean uh fireball is popular okay so i don't know if you guys know why we came up with the name fireball i kind of had an epiphany when we were talking to nick about names the dude got literally burned up blown up he got blown up or whatever it was and um so we were trying to think like what's a good alcohol related because all our stuff is alcohol related that's just the theme we have for names i don't even drink anymore but whatever that's the theme we have and we were trying to think of something it was just like click fireball it's perfect dude got burned up and then you have i think we're going to change this one to dark matter orange we want it to have a little more color in there these don't have great color these are just these are just handle materials that we had there for prototyping. We sent the blood red and the and the uh, blue one, electric blue, for the original prototypes of these. So we might change that in production, but um, this one would be DM orange was the idea. But the more I think about it, I feel like we should probably do more satin than the black ones black ones usually don't sell as well so maybe we just do the the blue with the black but then fireball kind of you want the orange i don't know we have to figure that out maybe we'll do like 150 satin a hundred or 200 satin a hundred of the black wash and then do 50 50 blue and red I feel like we have to have the blue, we have to have the red slash orange because of the fireball thing. You know what I mean? You gotta have like a yeah. fire or you one. You gotta have at least one one model type that's got that colorway. Yeah. Um Colin worked for CMB. No. No, his it's CM knife designs. His name is Colin Mason Pierre, CM. Uh, how far Palmer back? is a great dude he talks about it sometimes or he's talked about it before it was a, a a close deal um did anybody get lost in that accident i know he and somebody else got really badly hurt who nick oh yeah when that when that happened um yeah, I saw your video, BT. I was watching it yesterday. Um, 
actually meant to leave a comment, but then I was driving with my kid to the park and I, I didn't get to finish the video or anything. I, I saw the first, like, I don't know, 25 minutes. I saw most of it. Um, but yeah, all the, all the changes from the V1 to the V2, we asked for all those. Um, and then we switched to best tech because QSP couldn't do some of them or wouldn't. They wouldn't go thinner on the scales. They wouldn't contour it. It was weird. Um, I feel like now they probably would do that. But at that point, they were like, no, we can't go thinner. We can't do a deeper hollow grind. So I'm like, all right, we're going somewhere. I mean, we got to get, we got to do better. Well, you got to. And then we did the pony. We did the pony stout, which gave us a lot of the groundwork for the V2 because we changed it to contouring. We made the knife taller and thinner. And we really liked how that felt in hand. That initially we got from uh, Kun Wu because when we did the V1, we got prototypes from Kun Wu and QSP. We ended up going with QSP. But the thing we liked on the Kun Wu ones was it was a taller handle and a thinner handle versus shorter and fatter. Um, and that just feels better in hand to me personally. Um, so when we went to best tech, we already had all that kind of mapped out. We wanted it taller, thinner, contoured, right? We wanted the milling, we wanted, um, jimping on the spine. Uh, there was a whole lit, I mean, it was a litany of shit. We changed deeper, hollow belt satin because QSP wouldn't do belt satin back then. But I feel like it's kind of cool of them to not try to do something that they're not comfortable with. And I'm sure after you ask them, it was kind of like with, was it Austin who did the Lake or not as Lake Champagne, the first knife he did and QSP couldn't do a hollow. And then they did the hedgehog a couple of months later. It's like they want to innovate, but they probably don't want you to be the lab rat. You know what I'm saying? When you ask for it to be thinner, they're probably immediately going to look for a way to make them thinner, but they don't feel comfortable selling to you as their customer, something that they're not a hundred percent confident that they can execute. I don't know, man, that knife is over half an inch. There's no reason they couldn't have made that knife thinner. <laughs> Depending on how their, their facility set up and how I think they it was the, I think it was the way they did the bolsters because if you take the scales off of a V1 and the scales off of a V2, I think the V1 scales are actually thicker than the V2 scales. So the, the frame underneath is thinner on the V1 than the V2. So I think what they needed to do was thicken up that portion and then thin out the bolster areas. But I don't know if they looked at it and they were like, well, if we go thinner, then we got to make that thinner. And then that's too thin. It's fragile at that point structurally. But it's like, if you could have left that alone, you could make the scales thinner. Like, and maybe they couldn't mill carbon fiber that thin at that time. I don't know. It is an interesting question. It is an interesting question. I think it's, uh, it's it's a good thing to see a company not just take your money if they're not comfortable that they can deliver what you ask for. And then when you see them a few months later, get to that point. And, you know, it's I think it's reputable business to do to not try to do something that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. Um, Sean, uh, Blade Binge is doing a drop tomorrow with the V2s. They picked up a handful at Blade, Texas, and they're dropping those tomorrow for a St. Patty's Day thing. So uh, go check out Blade Binge. I actually have a link to Blade Binge now. Uh, it's in the description of every video. If there's a moderator that could grab it out of my description. Here, I'll grab you on my Blade Binge link. Sit tight. Uh, <laughs> I'll drop it in there for you, Lefty. To eliminate entire segment of knife because of the lock. I'm just going to buy what I like and keep what I really, really like. What do you mean? I agree with you, JD. Well, that was from an earlier comment where um, somebody was over liner locks, Mersault, which I kind of agree with, but uh, I think JD's saying he, he'll stick with buying by design. 
All right, where's your link? It depends. On your like, link I tree? Get, like button locks, I, I really don't like either. But then you have a knife like that Jens Anso Eros or whatever. That thing's unbelievable. It's a button lock. So there's always exceptions. Um, and then it depends. Like, the, the, this counts as a liner lock. Like, you wouldn't buy this because it's a liner lock. But it's also kind of a frame lock. Like, I don't know. What category does that fall in for you? So it's kind of like knife by knife for me. It makes more sense. David Jewell, I'm with you, Lefty. He says, fuck them, pointy ass, flipper tabs. <laughs> so out, is, your, uh, is your blade <laughs> binge link? <laughs> Thank is you, your, David. Appreciate is your blade you. binge link not on your uh, link tree? Uh, It should be. Because it just takes you straight to the website. It doesn't look like it's a unique URL. Unique URL to what? To uh, Blade Binge. So when I go to your link tree to try to post it, and then what it does, I click on it, it takes me straight to um, Blade Binge like you want it to, but it doesn't have a unique extension on the end, right? So it doesn't have an identifier for you. Uh, That's one. I'm pulling it out of my, uh, hold on. Copy. Yeah, because it's just a, it's a basic link on your description too it still says naf sale but there's no oh no no no! not naf sale it's in my affiliate link section you're going to the oh, bottom where no I'm, I'm in your affiliate links blade binge yeah, okay that is a con that is a unique one i got it right here i'm pasting um, it but yeah let me check link tree and see if i fucked that up but i thought it's I still that. it's just still um it's still the uh same one as your it's at the top of my link tree right now. It's a share a sale link. There's no way that that's not. Look, it's the first thing on my link tree. Belly binge. Yeah, it is. I just, because, yeah, I missed it. Were you scrolled you got, down? You, is there you, another you one? Got oh, fucking, I see. There's yeah. another one for You've got, still. what, 150 links on here? Guard dog inserts, 3D printings. Speaking of 3D printings. I'll delete the one on... Uh, the one that says NAF sale. Have you but ever yeah, heard of Vertex? Vertex Cloudus 3D printed sliders it, from Etsy? Yeah. What about them? I picked up one. This is a V3. I don't yeah. think the I like it. The only downside with this boys. stuff is they're like direct copies of existing fidgets. Like Are that's they? I mean, a Magnus, I, that's a Magnus slider, basically, right? Well, all of them, yeah, all of them have this kind of pattern. So I don't know if that's copied because I don't come from the slider world. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But they're light and clicky. Uh, depends on if you're cutting cardboard or actually using it for work on what knife works best. Yeah, it's all personal preference for sure. Very true. And we definitely try to make knives that you can use, though. We don't get a lot of complaints about people having issues with using their knives for work and shit. Like, usually we get a lot of people who are like, this thing's fucking awesome because it's actually slicey, you know? Nick Palmer, Blue and Naughty with the membership for 14 months. My man. With the ball sack. What up, dude? Thank you, sir. Get your fireworks in. No, there you go. Thank you. Uh, what up, Steve? Trying to get Steve to make me more uh, tritium optics. He'll probably see some about flashlights. <laughs> hey, check it out. I got a new one. I bought this off of uh, Renegade EDC, and then I modded it. Oh, I didn't mod it. I put. Um, I bought this ring and clip from Barrel. Check this thing out, dude. Look at this. Oh, that's kind of a cool clip. I black this fucker up. DLC tie clip. And Is that the ring. same kind of light and that looked a like a black scoop? Terracote sleeve. This thing looks insane now. Is that what? the same maker that made the one that looked like a military scope that had the little ring on it? Yes. Same one. And I have another one that has a uh, Timascus ring. But the one downside is this clip is thick as fuck and it is tight. It is super tight getting in the pocket. I've been carrying it in my little uh, side carpenter pocket on these pants. So 
I feel like it does work there pretty well. And then I put uh, tritium in here, red optic. So, man, this thing is a torch. It's crazy. I love did you ever thing. get your big DX reach yet? Yeah, I did a video on it. No, I did I a short posted. last night. I, I, did a, I did a short last night. I went outside because it was super dark and rainy, and you could really see my tritium that I put in because I put vials in my sides. You bought actual tritium, or do you have glow? No, the, I, the glow came with it, but this is actual tritium. You, how much did I you spend on that? Like ninety bucks. I'm an idiot. It's like I know. I mean, green, I have like I have like green, blue, pink, green, blue, like, pink. So there's six of them. Um, I've I got UV um, glue so that I could put in those glow ones. I don't think it's worth putting tritium in this. Well, for me, because I keep this like on my night side table, which is the worst place, because what are you going to use it for except blind somebody? But it really does glow well because it glows on the side and it glows on the top. So Thing for me, blinding, dude. No, dude, it's I can shine it because I live across the street from the cemetery. Apart? I think I did I take it in the, the top off. I did it in the video. I'll, I'll post it like in a couple of days, but you can take this off and then take the whole. It's like a telescope. It's pretty cool. It's like a telescope. The The lens is so freaking thick. I don't know if I even, maybe I could give this away. And it is like a laser. Is cool maybe I'll keep it's that. got a, um, it's got a little thing on the card when you get it. You can't shine it at planes. And there was a black helicopter flying around because I live by the Redstone Arsenal. And we've got a bunch of like secret squirrel shit going on here. And I was really close. I was on my porch with it, just shining it on the guy in the open door. But I thought he might 50 cal me. That reminds me, if anybody wants to buy any O-lights, I have these three. Arkfeld Pro Orange, the new uh, Jabalot in green, oh. and a uh, Warrior X3. Does the Pro the Pro has all three settings, right? It has the black light, the laser, yeah, and black the light? light UV, and then regular. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you don't have one of these. I've got one that's got just the black light because uh, I didn't want the laser. Dude, you have I've cats. Got... This thing would be fucking perfect. My cat gave up lasers. She only likes living shit, man. I, I can shine a laser at the wall and she'll just look at me. And like, let me out to That's go kill hilarious. a baby rabbit. Ask Shane Shane sometime. I've got a serial killer cat. She's small, like nine pounds. Acts sweet and just stacks little mammals like cordwood. I, I feel that salty. A lot of lefties do that. Uh, I've always worn my watch on this hand, on my left and then carried my phone in my right. I don't know why. But now See I carry my phone in my back pocket. Okay, this is my back pocket. Check that fixie out. Hell yeah, thanks, Burger Beast. Yeah, dude, that, that's pretty sick. That's a Mag-10 knife works, dude. This thing's so thin. Gotta make some in Maine. 300 bucks, which I thought was very, very fair. Instead of using... If, as long as I don't stick it in my ass. Oh, I see what you're saying. But that defeats the purpose of the design. Take care, Ron. Yeah, that would defeat the purpose. Like, the point of it is to have this side not have, like, clip screws and clip shit over here. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess you could put a black little thing here, but then we would just have one backspacer. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I still think one screw right here is not going to change the aesthetic enough and it's still going to have that clean look versus some kind of tab there. Tab would have to match the milling and it would all have to work out. I don't know. Good Speaking idea. Though. Of tab that matches the milling. I did a review. I still got the knife. I had no idea it had a reversible clip. Did you know the Veritas from Kaiser had a reversible clip? The Veritas? Hell yeah, Ron. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, I know because I'm left-handed, and he, you know, he. Let me I didn't know it until I saw Melissa Blackwood short. I, I never knew short. it. I could tell. I could tell that the, it wasn't lined up perfectly, but I had no idea you could poke through there and knock that 
little uh, uh we kind of i think on. we did the same thing on the kaiser mash button lock we did something like that i think it's a cool th way to do it uh steve no i mean i got the barrel and i got what else did i get oh i got Daddy, the uh, cwf i got a micro click in stonewash to match all my other ones but um I sent it to Charles to refinish and everything. It was really, it was in bad shape. Person, I, I got a deal on it, but now I'm going to spend probably a hundred bucks getting it fixed up, but whatever. I should have asked before I bought it. It was like somebody's everyday carry for two years, I think. I used to have a four pound Pomachi Betty, and it was the most ferocious dog that I've ever lived with. It was sweet, but if you like rolled against it when you were sleeping, it would just flat out attack you, full go mode. Yeah, yeah I've and seen we do bleeding. the wrap around thing before. I think that might have been where I got the idea, actually, or at a least great where dog. the idea like kind of formed. You know, and then I was like, shit, you could put a, you could do a, a one for lefty and one for righty, and so. But yeah, we has done that for sure. I heard Olay's going to have a sale. Quick uh, question. Check, test your memory. You had a little cuff, right? Was that before you? Yeah, were I love that knife. Your... He just needed, what? I think he just needed to make the hole a little more exposed. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't, well, it doesn't hump up like the field. I would just miss see. it a little too often. But otherwise, pivot... it's one of, it was one of my favorite knives. Perfect ergos, great size. See how the pivot looks smaller? Yeah. I wonder if the bearings that fit the... It doesn't seem like those pivots are going to be the same diameter inside, no, the, does it? The, the, the little one takes 5 millimeter, one six. Okay. Yeah. Because on the compatibility... I have, a, side, I have a video. You can double check that. Watch my video on it. I will. Do you guys ever want to know the size of skiffs on something just... Search my, go to my channel, go to disassembly videos, and then search the knife. I probably have the video. Palmer, I, at it, I think awesome. I have like three or four hundred disassembly videos or something. It's insane. Might be more than that. I don't know. That's all the content I used to watch of yours because I just loved yelling at the screen when your bearing would be under your knife and you'd put the whole thing together. Yeah. God damn it. That was Are my all knives limited runs? Uh, it depends on the knife, but I mean, for the most part, any model that's been popular, we've done another run or iteration of like the mash. We've done three versions. We've done two now on the premium pony. We've done two stouts. Um, Growler V2, we've done two runs. Uh, so we definitely... We definitely like to re, you know, we're doing another lush uh, batch. So it depends if the knife bombs, which, you know, I guess that hasn't really happened, but like the buzz didn't do very well. Like we sold them all. So it did well, I guess, but Dude, like that's they didn't, why right know, there. And you say they don't look the same. That's the reason why. No, because the reason, this why, is, good. The reason why is the, the price for that comparison yeah i guess i don't know i think if we had if we had done the knurling like we did on those extra scales and we had done a milled clip i think it would have been way better in terms of how it was received we're actually we just paid for prototypes from best tech on a budget version so we're doing well, a course. mini we're doing a mini buzz in weave carbon fiber um and nitro v and i think you're also at a disadvantage because most people are buying from web pictures so when i finally bought this after trying the stout v2 because i still am not crazy about the pelican but that's just me but it did make me buy this and pelican. getting it in your hand you can feel the extra value that's not a doubt but when you see it on a website it's not as readily noticeable so the fireball has a 3.1 inch blade, I, I believe. So it's like seven and a quarter, I think, overall. Craig, probably the same size. The mesh is seven in. and a half. 
So you can see the mash is slightly bigger. This is 3.3 inch blade. It's actually a size we haven't done before, I don't think. Or maybe it's more like, uh, where's the pony? Let's see. I think the pony's going to be a lot smaller, actually. 2.9 inch blade. So, yeah, 3.15, something like that. Hey, is the fixed growler going to be a thing? I saw that Luck was in here and he was making one, but yeah, he was making he was making one for us. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, it's is that's that something you're thinking about doing? A few of if if he wants to. I mean, if he can sell them and if he wants to, and he, I mean, he can throw us like ten percent. I don't care. He can make those. Just DM so can... me, Luck. Naf, DM me and tell me what those uh, what you're thinking about those. The growler is my favorite Damn. style. I love to explain. That, that sounds wild. 80s iron. <laughs> the V2 materials and work done is next level. However, the V1 had a smoothness that I feel was lost. I don't know, man. I don't know if you got well, they were stonewashed blades. So I guess it depends. If you got a belt satin, it's not gonna have that. Like every belt satin knife is going to have a little bit of like less smoothness, unless you wait, you know, a oh, long time in. to break it yeah. in. But yeah, the stout V1s were interesting because they would just like, the blade was heavier. Um, But I like the action on the V2s better. I mean, I have like my Arctic Stonewash one just swings down. Um. So, I don't know. But I do know what you're talking about. It did have, a, like, a really crazy drop-shut action. And I think that's what some people really like. Uh, no. No. Um, the Lush is coming back in Purple Haze. As far as I know, Purple Haze. And then Gold Dark Matter. 80s. Flow Party. Those two are camo carbons. And then a blacked out one with gl dark matter glow. That's what I was going to ask you. Is that the the knife that was on the sharpshooter jack that Lord Needham sent me to check out? Thank you, dude. Looked like a dark gold, but when you put a light on it, it was green. Badass. The coolest shit I've seen. Yeah, yeah. so the that's the dark matter glow. That's why we're using it, because when it's in daylight, it looks like marble. It just looks like dark matter black. With a it little like bit of, spe yeah, a little speck really of maybe nice silver. Or... It doesn't look like glow shit. You know what I mean? So you put a light on it at night. Yeah, I mean, I think I thought that was the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. I'm glad y'all are doing that. Yeah, we're doing that on the nip, the nip slip, I believe, and we're doing it on the lush. So the nip slip, I'm pretty sure we're doing it on the nip slip too where we're doing dark matter glow. And then we're doing an orange dark matter and a purple, I think. Yes, that's what we're doing. But no, the purple is purple haze, not dark matter. Jeez, man, there's so much shit. I'm sorry, I can't remember everything. It's like, I said both knives are top notch and I thought the changes were moving forward, not backwards. The knife is excellent, no doubt. I would keep it over my Evo 3 and I honestly live it. Sick, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, I saw the video, dude. I really appreciate it. I know you loved the stout when that came out. Um, so I'm glad you like it. I, I honestly I think every change was positive. I know some people don't like jimping, so that one's um preference based, but other than that one, I don't know why you would, you know, unless it's that smoothness thing that guy was talking about. That's a nuanced thing that sure, you know. Uh, Kev loves tall boy nips while he is on fireball buzz and lushes over a pony stout. He drinks a mash on a growler of her. Palmer, he doesn't do too many lives, but I wish he would start. He has a weapon of knowledge about knives, and it's incredible. Are you talking about Sasa? I think he's talking about Brian. Transparent. Brian. He does he, he does lives on Instagram. Oh yeah, I don't know who you're talking about. That. He does live. No, he's doing them on YouTube now. 
All right, since y'all are talking about goats and Michael Jordan, I'm going to talk about the ultimate goat, Mike Tyson, and my prediction that he's going to knock Jake Paul fucking out. I don't care how old he is. So here's the thing, dude. I don't I don't know who Jake Paul is, to be honest. Is he an he's MMA good, fighter or something? No, he's a YouTube influencer. He's Logan Paul's little brother, but he's a good boxer. He's, he's what you call an influencer boxer, and he's fought Wait. some good guys. Logan Paul and Jake Paul, the Paul brothers. He's not even a professional boxer or MMA well, fighter. No, he's beaten some MMA fighters in a boxing match. He's but gonna he's, die. Yes, and a lot of people, most people think, oh, this isn't even fair. Jake's going after a senior citizen. Have you watched Mike Tyson train? Each day he posts on Twitter. Day three, Mike you show Tyson you how to focus. Is the scariest human being on the fucking planet, dude. That guy without, is literally the Grim Reaper. Like, without any doubt, he hits harder than any man, any human you know, alive. Do you remember when I when when I was a kid? I remember the whole thing where, what what did he do? He punched a guy through a, a phone book or something, and like shattered his face or something. I forget what happened. Oh, dude, it was he, like he, this he phone book thing. The he, dude has the. But like the hardest punch, I think, ever. Well, what's funny is, you know, he's been on Rogan and he's found he's old, but he doesn't need to be. I he's mean, found him... God. He does like ayahuasca and mushrooms he's and he's like, very. Yeah, he's a pothead, right? But, but yeah, but once he gets into the fight mode, like training, they even showed a video of him yesterday. At, somebody who knows him, he's a photographer, came up and Tyson was like getting ready to punch the dude. He's like, get out of my face. And that's not the way he acts normally, but he gets in fight mode. Check out the video I've got out there real quick. There's no sound. Uh, hold on. Let me just answer this real quick. That sounds like a, I liked it too. So potentially something we could do. I, I like I liked the concept. This is 57. Whoop. Whoop. Let me beat it. And the guy he's punching is the top MMA trainer in the sport under Dana White. So the guy who's holding the bags is like a badass jujitsu. Guy looked old though. He is kind of old, but you think um, about it. So if that kid lasts three rounds, I'll be impressed. That's the only way he'll win. That's the only if, way he wins, too, is if he his just... stamina. Yeah, because Mike Tyson won't have his Mike, stamina. He stays away long enough. If he does Like, if Mike connects on a good punch, he's done. Demonock, I agree with that. But Tyson's one who his style doesn't really allow him to be hit. And when I was drinking, it's been about 10 years ago, when I was still married, I was at this place called sips and this like 20 something year old guy i was 47 said something to my ex kind of rude and uh i used to be a grappler a wrestler and i without thinking shot a double leg on him and choked him out in the fucking store in sips they drug me out i didn't get charges pressed but it doesn't matter as long as you're not going for a long time like i wouldn't want to wrestle 12 minutes now but the older you are the more time is of the essence and you can do a lot of shit in two minutes and you don't have to do it fairly. I mean, Mike Tyson's going to go in and just knock his head off. If he hits him in the gut, that would be his best bet. Yeah, that's wild, dude. Uh, Ken Snowtrog, that's a good point because Tyson uses his forearms bucks, like a champ. Is that fair? 50 bucks? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the line does. And what's funny about it, what's interesting, is it's an exhibition, right? It's not a fight. So it'll start out with them out there doing stuff. But what'll happen is Jake will say something or maybe get a shot on Tyson that's a little hard, and that switch is going to go off in Tyson's head. The same switch that went on in Sean Strickland's head when he laid Sneeko out. I mean, I mean, those fighters are fighters. That's what they do their whole lives. they give him... If they pay enough money and they want this Jake guy to win, I, I don't think Tyson would do it. No, Tyson's legacy is worth more to him because he's got all like, the money he Tyson's needs. Gonna, Tyson's going to fight this guy. Uh, he's, Tyson said 
yesterday in an interview that he's not doing it for the money. He's doing it to respect boxing. Jake Paul said like a month ago that he knows he could take Ali. He knows he could take shit like that. So it's all about Tyson's wanting to redeem boxing. To me, Tyson is the last vestige of like real boxing. Gladiator, a gladiator. He'd yeah, come like out Foreman, with no spots Ali, on. Uh, I really like Manny Pacquiao, actually. He would be, he's probably way younger than Tyson. I liked him too. I like Roberto Duran. I like Sugar Barely Ray Leonard. a club level boxer. Yeah, Jake. He's a pro boxer. So he is a pro boxer. Yeah, I'll show you a clip of Jake real quick. Right. It's all about money, but. But Tyson doesn't need the money. He's not going to take a loss to an influencer for the rest of his life for a bag of money because he's got bags of money. No, but that's what I'm saying is, yes, it's all about money to everybody else. (laughs) And Tyson will take the money, but he's also going to actually fuck this guy up. I think so, without a doubt. That's my take on it. But I'll be honest, I don't watch boxing anymore. The last fight I watched was uh, Mayweather Pacquiao, where Pacquiao beat him and then somehow Mayweather won. Uh, (laughs) And there literally has not been anything interesting in boxing since then. Because it's all, all it is now is like, this guy from the MMA is going to fight this boxer. And it's like, it's all about money and and a big circus and shit. It's not. But it has not brought like, back a lot of dude. legitimacy. And this you dude, watch, check this. Like out. Ali Foreman, those fights are so fucking awesome. You just don't have that kind of shit anymore. And check, MMA this is, is not. To me, this it's not is Jake Paul, and he's not fighting the best fighters in the world. But this is him, his six wins and four KOs, and you can All see right, that he knows how to punch. But he's not fighting Mike Tyson in these fights. And he opens himself up for Mike Tyson's little close style to come in and just knock his fucking chin backwards. Dude, that guy's going to die. Let me go to one of his late fights. He's going to die, dude. Oh, without a doubt. I don't care if he's 26 or 27 or what. Look at that wild swing. I mean, he's a, he's a show boxer is what it looks like to me. I mean, he's got a he he's got power, but the other thing that people don't like about them about the uh, influencer boxing is they don't take tests, right? So they can do steroids. They what can the do. What the fuck all- is an influencer boxer? So, the biggest thing right Hell now, yeah, you got the the IRL streamers. So you've got people like Aiden Ross who has a boxing league where he gets these people that have million two million people streaming audiences that have beef online usually kick streamers gamers and shit like that and they put them together on cards to have boxing matches which is how the whole logan paul jake paul thing started and they sell a shitload of tickets because if you think you've got eight people on a card four fights each of those people have six million followers and each of those four groupings have beef, you're going to turn out and sell a lot of pay-per-view tickets. So the money just makes sense. Even if they're not great fighters, just to see two little scrawny geeks who yell at each other for the last two years, go out there with gloves on and slap each other silly, people watch. I agree, Demon Ock. But as far as the Pauls go, Jake Paul is a 100% better person than Logan, Logan Paul. My words, my thoughts, my truth. Logan's a piece of shit. I want Mike to win, but damn it. Yeah, like I said, I I don't know the guy enough. But. dude, I've got another prediction. He's just a scary motherfucker. And I've got another prediction that the fight might not even happen because there have been rumblings because I've watched the team that that Tyson hadn't signed the contract yet because they were supposed to be getting him a couple of stipulations. But now that Jake's seen him training for the last four days, Jake's thinking he fucked up and is not going to meet what? those um, conditions that Mike said, because they're doing stuff like wearing headgear, doing all kinds of weird shit that Mike didn't want to do, but he was going to do some of it. Um, that was Logan Paul, but Jake Paul pumped and dumped a lot of crypto too. But Logan's the main scammer from CryptoZoo and all that bullshit. And he's the one that got caught 
and lost all his sponsors and canceled on YouTube for showing Who? the Logan. He got I, canceled. Why do you showing... guys follow these fucking people? Like, dude, these it's are not following. It's you don't use Twitter, do you? No, and I just don't care. Like, why do you care about this guy? He's fucking. I don't. He's no. just. He's somebody. He's somebody who's part of. And I try to keep up with what younger people think, but he's part of the cultural fabric. I mean, they're like twenty percent stake owners in Prime because they're influencers, right? So Prime is a drink. Have you ever seen that shit? Yeah. The prime drink. Okay, so it's like a multi-billion dollar business. KSI, the British influencer, the black guy's got 20% stake in it. Logan Paul's got 20% stake in it. And the company that makes beverages has 60%. Well, they found the audience of KSI and Logan because their audiences are 10 to 13 usually to be worth offering them 40% of a company that's going to net them out a billion dollars each when they sell because they're influencers. People, not us, but watch their shit. So when they step out of line and do really shitty stuff, like do a crypto scam that never even turns into what it's supposed to be, and Logan owned it. But that's because dumbasses he, listen to these dumbasses. Right. Like, and then, and then why are we even talking about them? For millions of dollars and still follow him. It's bizarre. It's just weird shit. Dude. Does he do anything good? Not like in is the he, public. I mean, eye. like, is he good at anything? Yeah, well, he's got a he's got a podcast that you could say is successful. Um, does he? he got, does he? Does he fucking break people's faces through phone books? No, no. Did hit, I mean, did he hit fifty home runs in a season? No, he's not. Now he was like, evidently did he invent the them. electric car. No, fuck this. No, guy. I but don't they care did. about Logan Paul. I don't. Even but they to, did. No. You know what? Logan Paul banned from this live stream. Can't. He's he's in there with makeup, and whatever that fucking guy's name is that you always try to talk about. We're done. We're that? done with Logan Paul. I will allow Jake. What's his name? Jake. Jake Just Paul. Because I want to talk about him getting his ass beat by Mike Tyson. Everybody wants to see that. Yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, if you guys want these, DM me on uh, Instagram and whoever, you know, I'll do the timestamp thing. I can't do it here. I, I always fuck that up. And people get all pissed. Um, but yeah, 50 for each of those. Um, I got to give away something too. Oh, I have this thing. Uh, what time is it? 11. Okay. I have this thing I'll give away. This is a. Uh, uh power bank this thing's interesting i'll find a knife too but so it's a power bank that's this big it's meant to put on your keys which is i don't know i wouldn't but it's like the size of a fob a little bigger than a car fob it'd go great in an adc bag and it has it's magnetically uh charged through this thing and you can actually hang the charger on the wall so the point is you come home you slap it on the magnet thing on your wall it holds your keys and charges it at the same time and then you take it with you and then you have a charger that'll it'll bump your phone up like 50 percent or something if you need it. so if you're someone who's always charging your phone maybe you want it on your keys i actually keep it plugged in in my truck and if I ever need to charge my phone on the go, I have it and I can just charge my phone and then drop it back in there to charge over the next couple days in the truck. Um, this is what it looks like with the charger. Nobody listens. They drop at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night on Blade what? Binge. Yeah. The Devo. The Stouts. So yeah. like this, you would mount this. It comes with a, comes with a piece of... Uh, 3M adhesive. tape or something? Yeah, so you mount this to your wall near a plug, obviously. And then this goes into the wall. And then you can grab it. And then when you get home at night, you can hang your keys like that. This will charge. And then the next day, you just take your keys with your power bank. I don't know. Probably cool. be better for like a chick, maybe. Or it'd be cool to drop in your little EDC pouch if you're yeah, one of those. But I keep people. this like this in my little center console thing in my truck. And then it's plugged in. And then if I'm ever driving and I need a charge, I just take this. Oh, and the cords are they're um, in the side here. 
Oh, this one, this is a new version. They pop out like that. You have a USB C on this side, and then lightning you have a lightning over here. And Very slow. So I'll just take it, and it's so light, you can just plug it in and it hangs off your phone. I'll charge it, and then when I'm done, I just put it back in the little center console and it charges up. And it may but, be perfect for Blade Show or something like that, where you just might need a charger or a charge and a half. Yeah, I don't know. It, to me, it's not like the most useful thing, but it is cool. Um, for giveaway, oh, you know what I have that you guys might like? I have a couple of things. So I have this fixed blade that I reviewed, this uh, JL Fixie. I want that. Here, I'll, I'll put in my name for that one. So I'm kidding. I That's badass, this, though. What? That's badass, though. Who did you say makes it? Kubi. 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 It's really nice, dude. It's got my card of scales, and then it's a 14C blade. Yeah, it looks like a good EDC fixing. Really slim, yeah. Well, dude, if you want it, I'll just... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I just, I love, I'm a fixie, dude. You know me. You got and me. And then stuck I have this team. one. This I is blame you for uh, one. That's two, one of the best Kubis. I haven't seen it in Ulta, but I had it in G10. It's, yeah. um, I love that leaf blade. It's, it's probably the slightest Kubi I've fire. ever had. Yeah, it's really good. They sent me this with their D2 sale or whatever. I always try to get the black ones with the D2. Looks pretty good with the uh, the Ultim. That's a great knife. So I can do that one and the rolling square thing. I think yeah, that sounds like a mad man. Older. Is it the three eighteen? I'm trying to remember what that Kubi number is because that was my. I think favorite. it's the one two two. Yeah, you're right. The one twenty two. Or one. And they all have names one. now. Uh, two months ago, Mike was using a walking stick. <laughs> yeah, and in a month from now, he'll be knocking out that fucking kid. He was. But see, what people don't realize is Mike has access to all the shit that Joe Rogan takes, whether it's stem cells, whether it's H H HGT, whether it's the latest, greatest anti-aging drugs, recovery drugs. I mean, steroids. But, I mean, he can do all that. And afford it so he can recover quickly. Uh, I'm guessing Tyson is in it one because the guy probably called him out, right? Or did Tyson did. call him out? No, he called Tyson out. Yeah, and he he the so the reason Tyson says he's in it is he disparage the memory of Muhammad Ali, who Mike Tyson looks up to, not just by being the boxer he idolized, but his social stances. He was on uh, Tucker Carlson a couple of days ago, Mike Tyson was, and laid it all out. Um, that he was going to fuck him up, pretty much. So, I would also say Tyson's in it, because it's been a long time since he's gotten a $30 million payout or whatever. He's going to get a chunk for this. Sure he will. Sure he will. And, and he's gone broke a and couple of times. And he's probably thinking it's pretty much a sure thing. <laughs> so, like, I just got to fuck this kid up and take however many millions. You know what I mean? Exactly. I they, these guys make, like, $100 million off of these. Dude, like, it's, it's ridiculous because um, he, he doesn't need – yeah, it's, it'd be hard for anybody to turn down $30 million. Anybody. I don't care how rich you are. But um, his legacy, I think, to him, is so much more... He looks at it as easy money. I don't think there's any doubt where Jake's like, I think I can beat Tyson. And they're like, I can beat Tyson. Tyson's like, you have no fucking idea. Because I'm, I'm, again, I'm 56 years old. And I'm not going to go out and fight Tyson. But I still skate 10 to 15 miles a week. I still got my faculties. I'm still quick. That's I'd fight thing, if somebody Brett, touched me. Is I don't think Tyson needs more than three rounds. If he connects, it's over. So I, I mean, that's going to be his mission is going to be just to connect in the first. It's going to be a one-round fight 
or it's going to be a Jake Paul fight. I think it'll happen in one round because all Tyson has to do, Jake's never right. been hit on the chin that hard. It'll and probably all Tyson's be a fucking go stupid like that. Is, how does Jake fight? Is he like Mayweather where it's all fucking def defense? Because I hate He's, that. Opens himself up. No, he's very offensive, but he doesn't have a close. Oh, That's what all the people say about him. That he's, he's I mean, he gets a lot of praise for as far as he's progressed as a boxer. If and he some was a defensive fighter, he would probably win. Dude, he's going to step. All you got to do up. is just, you just got to stay away from him. All you got to do is stay away from Tyson for a few rounds and then he'll tire out. Defense, but, that is so funny. I would pay to see that. Last fight was against an Uber driver. What is this world? This is this, this is why I don't pay attention to this shit. But it's an Uber driver. It's useless garbage. And that is because what Jake does, this guy was a professional fighter who was kind of a journeyman. He'd lost his last fights and wasn't getting any fights and had to resort to driving Uber. And Jake went out and resurrected his career. Even though yeah, Jake was younger than easy fight. Though, yeah, yeah. He, and he fuck, dude, he fucking beat Mayweather. Mayweather won on some bullshit in that Pacquiao fight. That was, I was pissed. It's yeah, I've always game. thought that boxing, even when I was a kid, and I could never, I always knew wrestling was not real. And if any of y'all think it is, I'm sorry. But he I always knew that. He people he knows he can beat. <laughs> well, but there's he can uh, beat Tyson, I guess. There are a lot of people that say shady shit happens in boxing. That prize fighting, there's a lot of. Shenanigans uh, that go on. Fighter, gotcha. There's still word of Pac Man versus Mayweather 2. They've been teasing that every now and then. And Pac Man McGregor, Connor wants that. Who I'd love Connor, to see Connor who did come Connor back. Fight? He fought Mayweather, right? Yeah, Man. but that wasn't an MMA fight. That was he just lost, a boxing match, right? right? Yeah, he lost, but it wasn't his yeah. him doing his thing. That's because Mayweather doesn't mind. lose because he's he's a very good technical boxer. Right, so like, and he scores. He wins he scores. by he wins by points, but he he doesn't look, but he doesn't look not, like he wins. That's why I don't like him. Snow Trog's right. He's a scorecard boxer. He's mastered right. the game of laying points, which is a lot of times all it takes. Which is fine, but that's why Tyson likes the theory of no, if I put about, you to sleep, there's no question. What about? Transparent Knives versus John Sorensen. Boxing match. On YouTube. <laughs> or, I, I'd rather see Brian and Alex go at it. Or Sergio, my money on Brian. Kun, Sergio from Kunwu versus John from, from Rotten Evo. <laughs> Palmer, I'll pull him up. He has put on a time, but he's doing it. He's all right. Con is not at his bre his best right now. He's I'll doing all it. kinds of Brian blows. versus Hinderer. Brian versus Rick Hinderer. Do you think Rick could, could land some punches? Uh, that'd be great. They're not wearing headgear. Are don't they not? Know. Even better. I don't remember big fights where they were wearing headgear. No, but this is an exhibition. Keep in mind, you wouldn't, you no, couldn't get a fight a sanctioned. Fucking, this is a death sentence, is what this it's is. It's a death sentence, but it could not be sanctioned because I of agree, the age right. difference. I agree. And if Tyson loses, I'm just going to never watch anything again on social media. I don't think Tyson is has the even. I, I don't think he has the. I mean, he's lost fights before, but that's when he was going through divorces after Cusimano died and he lost his team. Um, Tyson's a focused son of a bitch. Check out this picture. What is this? This Conor McGregor, right. and that's not now, but that's what he was versus what he is, and he's trying to come back. Okay. He's one of the baddest, most scary people. Have you ever seen him fight? Yeah, and, so and, um, lose. yeah, well, he got his leg broken once and he lost once, but he was, he's won. No, I saw him lose to Mayweather. Oh, yeah, but that was just boxing, dude. He's a, this guy chokes people out. He will kick you in the back of the head. Well, see, that's the thing. I, I like the boxing. I, I don't care about MMA at all. That's not the same thing to me. That's martial arts. That's whatever. I like seeing people get punched in the head and getting knocked out 
Because I well, these guys punch in the head. Watching and... Rocky, like that's what I want. That's, I want to watch fucking Rocky in real life. Like that's what I'm trying to do here. All right. I feel Basically, you. Basically, this is Rocky Eight, right? Was it Rocky Seven? Where are we at on Rockies? This is Rocky Seven. Tyson coming back. He's coming. The stallion's coming back to fight. Diaz is a badass, and that pissed me off to no end. I when saw he that lost. fight too. Who was that? It, Diaz versus Logan Paul. What? It was Diaz fought Logan Paul or Jake Paul. He fought one of them not too long ago and lost in a boxing match. It was a decision, which it's a fucking influencer box. So, I mean, is, are the judges fair if you're doing something that's not sanctioned? But Nick Nick Diaz kept walking right into fucking Jake Paul or Logan, whoever it was and throwing punches. Whatever leaves Austin, that is. Yeah. How can they? I'm buying I one. Agree, Fred. What, the Ultim thing? I don't know if those are available. Oh, you're they talking are. about the power bank. If you do, use my uh, link and my code. Do you have a, a Kubi code? No, we're talking about, I'm talking about the power bank. I think that's what he's talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about that Kubi 122, because uh, they do have those in stock. Oh, on they Kubi do. Stock. On yes, Kubi side. I, yep. I have a code to both. So hold on, let me grab it. Drop your Kubi code in there because because if you guys <laughs> want this power bank, it's um I got a twenty percent code. Yeah, I'm gonna pro- well you can't convert a link, can you? Uh, the Ultim one, I also have a code for. Here, I'll private message you the Ultim one, and you can convert it to a link. Uh, or I mean, do you even need to do that? Code, uh, I assume I don't know how that works. But. Here it is. I'm just going to send you this, and then you convert this link. So the code is for D2 knives. It also works on that new. Um, it works on that new Kubi with the titanium 14C, the Veragero. Is that the long skinny one? It works on this one. Yeah, that's a pretty cool looking knife. It looks Kaiser. dollars And then you use the code. It's another like 6% off or whatever whatever the code does. Um, I just realized the clip might be reversible. How did I not notice? Oh, no. It sits into the scale. Never mind. Take care, knife nut. Damn, that would have been cool if the clip was reversible. Palmer, he's half of uh, Evo. Who? John Sorensen. No, he is Evo. What do you mean? Oh, is he all of Evo? He's the I designer thought... of he, he's the guy behind Rotten Design. Who gotcha. and he designed the Evo. He's, he's not part that... of CKF. No. He's just a designer for them. Kubi taking ideas from Spider Co. What's the idea from Spider Co.? I don't know. Either way, I think... What up, B? Backpack B in the house. I would step in the ring versus Tyson for a mill. Easily just need to update the will so my family gets that mill. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I I would just lean back. I I would lean back. Jake beats Tyson, he wins big. And if Jake gets KO'd by Tyson, Jake still wins. Yeah, true. That's true, dude. He suckered Tyson into it, and now he's going to win either way. He's gonna I, make I disagree. I, I disagree. But, if, 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 Jake but Paul gets out, if, if Jake Paul gets knocked out, he's going to be humiliated because every boxing commentator and – Everybody, even Jake Paul on their podcast, talk about how they almost feel bad for taking the fight. So Jake's talked so much shit that he's gonna be he's gonna be hurting. He might make plenty of money. He's he doesn't need money. Those guys are loaded for life, like generational wealth, just off the bullshit they do. Because they both, which nobody talks about, they both have stake in gambling companies, online gambling. That's where all those guys parlay and make their big bucks. 
Yeah. They get deals with Stake or with DraftKings. Soft touch and hard steel to the death. Brian will hold an edge, but Rick will be tougher. Tickle me, Cheeto. I saw that name last night, I think on MCs, and I just laughed my ass off. I just thought of Tickle Me Elmo and picture you giggling. <laughs> Tyson starts to lose, he'll bite Jake's nose off. Did y'all see Jake's stupid promo where he got the face tattoo and he bit off the ear and spits it in the ring and he does all the stupid shit that Tyson used to do? Nope. He totally disrespected him. He's going to die. It's going to be beautiful if it he happens. Should keep, he should keep talking shit. And, and it's the first live sporting events on Netflix. MMA That's is big. Boxing is checkered. Yeah, dude, I think checkers is way better. So you've got to think that Jake Paul and his management team is very smart to go to Netflix first and say, hey, we want to bring live sports to Netflix, which they've never had. And then they got three I offers. So. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I thought John and Brian had a little something. Maybe I I'm know wrong. Alex did. What's up, Edgy? Shane, Shane. I publicly apologize for the <laughs> insinuation. I don't know. I just think it'd be funny. I feel like you guys are always talking shit on each other in comments and stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Gosh, was was golf on uh, Netflix? Maybe it's the first boxing match on Netflix. But anyway, they had they went to Netflix and Maybe they got three offers. The power bank, man. Uh... What are your thoughts on the Snafu 2.0? Is it worth 650? Nah. I mean, it is an integral. It gives those knives a little bit more value. I didn't like those all that much. Their detents all suck, dude. Will it work on the Kubi rat? I don't know. Give it a shot, man. I put it in the uh I put it in the chat. Hell Edgy, yeah, I'm a golf as a game kind of guy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. John looks fit. The only way I beat him is if he doesn't wear safety glasses and blinds himself for the fourth time in his life so he can't work on his custom orders he owes his customers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I haven't heard about the blinding thing, but... Al Coonley. Shane has no ears but STDs. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Troy, but just the fact that he's nobody and he can just call out Tyson and but I guess but Tyson's saying yes, yeah, so it's on him too, I guess. I don't know. I guess he just pissed Tyson off enough, man. See if I could find this little quote. What up, Shane Shane? Cracking, brother. Golf was the first live event. Probably, yeah. Yeah, when is that fight? When is that fight? What's up, Major Pal? Golf is not a sport. Yeah, it is. You got to do a lot of walking in that sport. Hey, I caught up. They they do make them walk. That would suck because I, I get tired riding in a cart, but I used to play golf when I drank a lot. So by the ninth hole, I was wasted. A lot of people do that. I normally, I don't know, I guess I haven't played golf in a while, but. I would drink sometimes, I guess. But you just have like a beer at turn or at the turn or whatever. You I wouldn't get like drunk. Some people are oh, we we'd start before we even teed off at seven thirty with Bloody Marys. Yeah, see that's gone overkill. That's overkill. Oh yeah, we had a blast though. Logan will be in the ring for three seconds and chicken out when Tyson Foods will get Logan as a sponsor for Tyson Chicken. What? You had me there for the first 
part of that sentence. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's like beer league soccer, you know, or beer league soccer, softball. Yeah, and he kicked ass, too. I mean, if you're that good, go for it, I guess. I struggle with watching golf. I can play it sometimes. It's fun, but... It's a fun game to play, but it's painful to watch. It's also very frustrating sometimes. Like, if you're not doing well, it's one of the worst sports because you're just like, oh, my God. Just hooking shit. Like, I don't know. Um, notice no boxers will ever fight MMA. Well, that's because they're not trained MMA fighters. Like, boxing is part of MMA. MMA is not part of boxing. So a wrestler, a grappler, the other way. A grappler's always got an advantage over a boxer. Without question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Tactical Terry, I used to love disc golf. I've still got a bag full of discs. I hadn't played in a while. You got a bag full of dicks? <laughs> little frisbees. Have you ever seen frisbee disc golf? Where they've got the baskets hanging out in the woods and you get a little bag that's got different size frisbees for drivers, for wedges, and you're throwing them at a basket with a pole on it. You're talking about frisbee golf again? Yeah, disc golf. Yeah, I, I play it. It's cool. It's cool, man. Man, this flashlight is sexy, though. It's good looking. It looks a lot better than that scope one. Oh, yeah. Way better than that one. Kent Daigle, the only way to play golf. Do you know anyone who's selling a Magna Cut drop point omnums on? You know, man. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> A Magna Cut drop point umnans on. I posted in this lefty group yesterday trying to find a Sabenza with the birth date of 7920. I still want to get that small Sabenza back that I had with my daughter's birthday that I stupidly sold because I didn't care. And it was like $400 at the time. That was money I wanted, you know. Do you remember who you sold it to? Nope, can't remember. And they probably abandoned it, your content a long time ago, so you can't even put out a message on your community tab. Was it uh, any of you guys? Did I sell you my small Sabenza lefty? If so, can I buy it back? Sounds like it's appreciated. I mean, who knows where it ended up. I just feel bad because it literally was down to the year of my daughter's birthday. Like it was the exact date, year, everything. But I just, I'm not like super sentimental like that. But now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, it'd be really cool to have that. And you'll get it again. Those knives come back around. As she gets older, the sentimental value is increasing. I know how that works. Because I remember we talked about that a couple of years ago. I was like, dude, because I've got a skateboard that, uh, Candy Spanks, a company out of California, made me, and it's got my daughter's exact birthday on it. So if you look at the bottom of the board, it was <coughs> finished the day she was brought into the oxygen world. I mean, I should literally just, I should just ask CRK to sell me one and put that date on a COA. That's all it is. It's all. It's it absolutely is. all it is. Because there's nothing in the knife, is it? Is there? If you take it apart, there's nothing stamped in the knife? So. I don't think so. It was Kyle. He has it. He's always the problem. Who's Kyle? Hope you're home, Texas knife guy. That is a long flight. Who's and Kyle? I hate driving after I land. That sucks. 
but I don't hate it as much as being laid over in an airport for four hours. So I'll a lot of times drive from Nashville or Birmingham. Hey, Edgy, where is um, Hayden? Hayden, Alabama. Is that close to Hayden's Corner? Between Arab and Birmingham? Oh, Kyle Cooley. Yeah, but why would you have a lefty? Why would you have a knife? That doesn't make sense. Sorry. It just didn't make sense. I didn't know that's where Boatwright Blades was. Have you ever heard of Boatwright Blades? Shane Shane, yeah. they make really cool fixed blades. They're in Alabama. They're in Hayden, which I think is close to south of where Shane lives. I'm mean, pretty sure it's just one guy. Yeah, it is. He bought it just to fuck with me? I don't think so. If it was me, Chris Reeve, Rick Hinder, and Strider, which would you use for heavy work? I would use none of those. I would use one of these two. I would use none of those because the Hinder would be soft as fuck. Which is what you would want if you're going to hard use it. Why? Because you can sharpen it and not chip the blade if you roll it. But it's not going to cut well because it's so fucking soft. Dude, have you seen how thick a fucking hinder is? It's designed to stick into doors and shit. Okay. Well, what is he talking about? There? I would I would choose this. This is a PT1 blade steel, tool steel. If strider. you're going to do something that requires the thickness and softness of a hinderer, you should just have a fucking axe or something. That's if you yeah, don't I understand that concept at all i understand the concept but that's scotch and things scotch and things cut straps with his striders pd1 i'm sorry scotch you know me i don't yeah, know yeah I'm but why about. wouldn't you like i could just use the i could use a stout to cut straps and it would do it much better i feel like very possibly kind of, would okay i have not hard used a stout I haven't hard used anything. Rick Hinder is thick, so why does it need to be soft? Exactly. It, it's an oxymoron. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. We all say that. Did y'all see Magna, uh, Max Ace's post on Instagram today? Max Where they were getting Yeah, they were getting um, questioned about HRC, and they did a test, and then they pulled up a bunch of receipts from Laren, let me show it to you. Right here, a note about our heat treat. This was on their- uh, It's pretty top. tough at higher HRC. Yeah, we've had this whole, I cut more than cut straps. I don't even look at hinder and knives, just have a bad taste in my mouth. They're just also not that comfortable or anything. They just, I don't know, it's just not for me. You fuckers use your knives. Mine just sit on a shelf. I mean, like I cut cardboard. I cut like tonight. I did a I did a little test with the tall boy. I filmed it. It'll be in the video. I cut zip ties and the same zip ties that uh, chip the uh, the axial fixed blade. This D two from Kubi went right through and didn't get chipped at all. Dude, when you said that, I wasn't going to text it, but that Magna Cut is softer. They say 62 on the nose. But, so it rolls. Are they, it just, are they, Sorry, are they testing it each rolls. one of them, or is that their average with the three-point I don't know, ring? but I cut two of those same zip ties with this. I mean, D2's tough, I guess. Sure. This has like a mirror edge on it. Demon Ock, my XM18 is an S45 too, and it's not soft. I've never, I've got a Magna Cut um, half sure, track. I haven't, I haven't cut paper or anything since I did that just to test it. Oh, this is I, like cardboard. Uh, well, no, nah, I think it's fine. I think it's just this weird paper. Let me grab real paper. <laughs> I also didn't clean it.
but I didn't feel anything like I did with the, uh, yeah. I think I'm just retarded. Yeah. Where's that shit? <clears throat> Let me clean the blade and see if it. Maybe those zip ties are just fucking brutal. <laughs> it's possible. You feel the little dips on your thumbnail. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't feel anything. It feels smooth, but it could have, I don't know what, it could have dulled it, I guess. It's nice. It's so slicey. This phantom. Yeah, like there's nothing there. It's sticky, basically. I don't know. Maybe I just can't cut. Like up here, no problem. But when I go to the back of the edge, kind of doesn't want to. I think it's the angle I'm on. I don't know. Yeah, if I do it like right handed. Fine. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, there's. I don't feel anything. That's why I love that little me. work sharp. Feel Show sharp. Me man. puts like mirror edges on them when they send them now. Which, because you've gotten a couple of Devos from the Kubi ones. They, they basically shit, have man. like a polished edge, which I don't. I mean, it looks good, but I don't know how great that is for like edge retention these sharpen so well i've sharpened all my mashes 17 and you can feel them on the stone that was 14 c no that's the buzz what am i doing this is the mash the mash is even slice here this is the yeah no, they, do sharpen up nice. they strop up nice too what is this shit you're trying to? Oh, I was just going to, this is that post that Max Ace put up. And somebody already commented that they're just hiding behind Lair and stuff. Because they're saying it recently came to their attention, blah, blah, blah. And then you go on and it shows. What is their, what is their Magna Cut at? Let's see. Magna Cut Steel is at. Uh, next slide. Hold on, let's see what we got. I showed it on here somewhere. Let me let me go back to the post. All right, I'm 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 screwing up because I'm not going here. It is that's just a steel composition. Let's see the HRC on that sheet. Let's go back. That's just a bunch of China Ghibli gook. Let me. It was on this post. I saw it on my phone this morning. I should about talk to you about that show about making these too. This little ceramic rod thing is fucking amazing. Here it is. 62. 60 to 62. Well, 60 to 62 is not great. No. And that's what they're, and then they go, some official documents from Dr. Laren on Magna Cut Steel. Please see next picture. It goes, even just 6061 achieves the performance of the steel, blah, blah, blah. And then he that's has a hard. Greg Brown says, too. Well, there. There's an argument for it. It's just with folding knives, I kind of agree that it makes more sense to get the edge retention. 
and this is evidently a video where Laren talks about why manufacturers choose 60 over 63. I don't, I haven't watched it. I don't get into the whole steel shit. Cause again, I'm not a hardcore. All right. I used that little, uh, let me get rid of this. Get rid of that. Fuck that. I used that little ceramic magic wand and it's dropped. Let's see if that did anything. Yeah, see, now it's. It just cleaned up that. It's that last, like, quarter of the edge that doesn't. Well. Is, is you're getting in your choil? Yeah, I think it's because it's thicker back there. Remember, even where your plunge line is, is going to be thicker. I don't know. I think you're hitting your plunge line. Like up here, it's perfect. Yeah, I think it's sharp. I think it's just got a thicker. If you look at it upside back down, here, back here is fine. Once I get here, it's kind of iffy. I'm guessing. Maybe. Hope you feel better, Neil. Maybe because of the studs, the way they sharpened it? I don't know. No, look so, at it because um, I was looking at if you if you look at it upside down where your choil is or your sharpening choil, you'll see that it thickens up back there before it hits the plunge line. And so towards the back of that, it's not going to slice as well because it's thicker behind the edge. As it does up front. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One of these nights, I'm going to cut my fingertip off. That's going to suck. So What's up, Bob? says, you can tell the chick on the left doesn't know how to use knives. I do. He just called you a chick, dude. I can handle it. That's I'm, not, rude, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable really with my sexuality. And now, Edgy, that's not really called for. But and I wasn't defending H&C. I was maybe. concluding that it doesn't mean as much to me because I'm not a hard cutter. You need to iron it. You know this is made out of like mesh, right? You, you don't iron that. I wore mine yesterday, and this hat. If anybody here it. has one of these, you can attest how good this hat is. The chick at the gas station that I flirt with fucked with me last night when I walked in wearing this. Yeah, because it's a flat. Bang you? Mm -mm. I was out of her love zone because of this hat. Hell yeah, dude. Good to have you back, BT. Love you, man. Gotta get you on a live, dude. Get you on a live, brother. Did you find Evo. out if Stevie and oh, Maddie are that? doing... Evo is the best $30 hat I own. Bang, baby. See that? They're on the website. If anybody wants one. It's a very comfortable hat, and it's a cool hat. I it's mean, like you could hair. bend it if you wanted to. I just like them flat. I think it fits your head better. I've got kind of a smaller, shrunken head. I cut my hair today, so it feels... G-Ball, they're big. still on there. Here, I'll That's drop my said. affiliate link in there. That's what she said. Yeah, dude, they're on the website. Go pick one up. Lefty 10 code, baby. You can use Lefty 10. Is that a paid exactly, endorsement? Exactly, Derek. For my own, for my own hat. Exactly, Derek. I agree with that. At least they brought it to the attention and said, hey, this is why we do what we do with it's receipts. The, they put the same exact things up that Craig Brown said. Basically, this is what Laren says. This is what Crucible recommends. It makes sense. You know what so I mean? What, would you listen to a metallurgist or a bunch of nice people? I'm just saying, I would probably say I could make it harder 
But if the metallurgist says this is almost just as good with maybe a little less edge retention, but less opportunity for failure, there's, there is an argument to be said for maybe we're not always right. I don't know, because I don't know steels. I know that dark gravity's educated me on a lot of shit. Looks like you sat on it. Here, I'll show you, dude. Here's a... This is my charcoal one. Kyle, the one that's uh, that's posted, that's linked in that that I was just showing, I will. Because I need to learn about it. I mean, it is important to people. I get it. It's just, unfortunately... And I've gone out and used my kukri and chopped up some plastic chairs and stuff. And I think I rolled an edge there. Here's but I just took them out. They all look like that. <laughs> uh, what did you say? Who rolled a what up? Oh, I just said we were talking about I don't hard use knives, but I have gone camping and use my kukri my k-bar and roll the edge chopping up plastic chairs doing shit like that but i just sharpen them out what's the hrc of the hat 73 well i agree kyle and you do have to walk a line when you're when you're providing your product to different companies that are choosing to use it in different spec ranges right yeah because the bottom line is the company that's choosing to treat it at whatever hardness is the one that will ultimately deal with will the market accept it or not i don't know oh did he mark i missed it what did he say i'll go back and watch it There not be too mean to metal to uh, Max Ace. Metal Complex will start showing up in his complex in his comments. Looks like G Ball bought that hat. <laughs> Go G Ball! Hell just yeah! Just don't G -ball. wear it. Just don't wear it anywhere you want to try to get laid. <laughs> I'll get that out uh, tomorrow or probably Monday. I mean, if I do it tomorrow, it's not shipping till Monday. I'll need a growler patch too. All right. It, yeah, I agree. Remember. That was a joke I'll that I was hoping remember. you were still in here to uh, to catch. Right, hold on. Let me do this. Grab it. Let me see Real two. I would pick the Oz beast, and I have a Koenig. I've never handled Black a brown. Growler patch. Uh, I'll send you a little band aid dispenser, too. Look at you, G Bizzle. I remember. G Ball's order. Palmer, I bought the mini, and it to me, it maybe has more milling. It has maybe more swagger, but the Oz, in my opinion, that I bought at the same time I got this from was better to me. I, I like the way it felt in my hand. It was understated elegance. It was freaking just what I don't know why the Roosevelt. You know, I don't think it translates to an XL well, personally. I've not seen the X. I'm, I've seen it, but I've not handled it. Just I like the little one because the choil's so good. To me, it's like ah, uh, damn, G ball. Sorry, yeah, you're in Pennsylvania. You got hit with tax. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, we have to charge tax in PA in Georgia. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, it just the so the thing with the Roosevelt is it has flat scale. It's not contoured, and right. the larger you make a knife with flat scales, I feel like the worse it gets. It, you can get away with it on a small knife like that, but then you go XL. It's like why not contour it? Do they not have the machines to contour it? I'm sure they, they must do. not. They must only have the machines to to round corners. I don't know how the different axis CNC machines work, but they don't evidently have. Although my buddy A to Z, and I'll have to see it. He bought um, Paul Mills's putter mill pattern Roosevelt that's contoured. Have you seen one of those? It was a limited release. 
and it supposedly has contoured and transparent says the rosy xl is contoured really and i know that they made the original putter pattern contoured uh, it'll be here monday maybe i'm wrong but hold on let's pull it up i'm pretty sure the knife is always at flat scales the new lamia is about as good as anything i've got how is that contoured that looks flat as fuck to me that's not the putter mill is it this is the XL. The, XL. the edges are chamfered but i don't think the scale is contoured no, it doesn't look contoured. Metal Complex posted a short today. That I know, you that's what I was stadium. going off of. I saw his short, and it did not look contoured to me. Does that look contoured? doesn't to me, but I'm not. I'm unidimensional. Stonewash scales, stonewash everything, one limit per person. And, I mean, here's a mini, that I mean, or a normal one. They never looked contoured. I mean, I've well, had a few of them. The, the yeah the putter pattern allegedly that i'll see it monday is uh what's up in bomb does anybody have what a rosy that can confirm has anybody got a contoured rosy because the one that lord needham sent me was yeah, they'll buy it anyway i'm just saying it works on the small rosy but the xl i don't think flat scales or at least basically flat yeah, Fred the Lug, you're right. Brian did just confirm. Is it a really is it a really like light contour? Because you can't even see it. Probably as light as the hollow grounds in your knives. What? Hollow I grounds. Said, are this, <laughs> no, that was fucking with you. You didn't even pick up on it. You just kind of let it go over your head. I can't get you anymore. You're just too numb. Because your What's jokes wrong with you? They're stingers, they're not jokes. Someone just did confirm. Where? That's right, Fred. Set his ass straight. I mean, yeah, but Brian's the one I'm arguing with, so he doesn't count. <laughs> I hope Jeff doesn't There's think the no contour. Contour has flat scales. No Thank contour. you, Paul. Okay, You're right. But he's saying the XL has a subtle contour, but if you look he doesn't at think it it's top, contoured. I just got my brain messed up. I don't know. It just does. It looks flat, which to me, it kind of like. It just doesn't look like it would. Is it comfortable in hand? The small Rosie is fantastic ergonomically. I'm not saying that. But as an XL, I feel like. But if they added contouring, maybe that's why they did it. Because they agree. Todd, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think they're the lesser expensive machines are like three axis. And they'll only cut in like certain dimensions like cutting out scales and chamfering edges and then like a five axis and i'm probably wrong i'm talking no, from cabinet not business. every not every mill can do contour no, you got to have extra why, look, guys look at look at a lot of the usa made not medford can't do contour. Medford, uh, uh hinder i haven't seen a contour hinderer in my collection i prefer flat contouring not necessary well, Why? on that, Fuck. this little light contouring on this TRM, because you're do you consider that contoured, Kevin. Because you're dumb, Shane. Like, wait, 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 why? Do you consider that contoured, the TRMs, or is that too thin? If it's, these got, any, it's kind of, if it's got any kind of rounding to it, then yes, it's contoured. They do, they do, yeah. and I think I think this makes for a much more comfortable and it line. Improves the ergonomics across the yes. board. I don't understand the argument there. No, in a lot of cases, they can't. I learned this during the whole M3 tactical thing. But I would agree. There's probably some that can't, like, maybe... Oz Machine Company, they apparently can. I would say that, um, no, Oz Machine Company, I might be wrong, because I know that the one that I was thinking about is not contoured, but I know that uh, your buddy, surgical guy, his mill does, because theirs have those little swoops in them, which you could round that swoop over, because the cutting head, if it'll make a cut like that, what are they called? Why can't I think of that goddamn button lock company's name that you're thinking about partnering with? 
What? The button lock USA company that Chapman? you were talking about. Yes. Chapman must have a 3D mill because if you look at the way they cut those radiuses into the side, that's yeah. more than a chamfer. So they could round that on over or set right. up there. I mean, have access. Yeah. yeah there you go. I don't know, Fred. I don't think I'm going to make it. That's like next week, right? I think we're having uh, family over for dinner, like an early Easter thing. I might just be doing a one-day blade show run this year with uh, Dark Gravity because I'm trying to get him to go to one. Well, whatever, Shane. If that's what you like, that's what you like, man. It's cool with me. But contouring is definitely better. Like, take the Growler, for instance. The V1 versus the V2. That Just that little bit of contouring, I think, makes a huge difference. Shane, do you like your Shaman? feel better than your manix and i know i'm a manix fan so i don't but i took the liners out of my manix but i think the shaman <clears throat> even though it's not really contoured it to me it's softer than the rest of my spider coes yeah shane let's just make it less comfortable because we're not actually going to use it that's a great argument oh boy why don't you drive a fucking electric bike around you don't need your car that goes 120. Fuck out of here, Shane. Put your shirt on. Put your shirt on. Throw some man. pancake nipples. He's got the tiniest man nipples. They're so fucking cute. I hate to even say that. I think we're going to have to end it on that note. Yeah, that's just, that's kind John of... Talking about board yep. We should give away this stuff. So, I got the... I got the Kubi knife. Uh, I don't think it has contouring, Shane, so you can you can uh, enter for this one. Uh, yeah, they're flat scales, so you're safe. You're safe on this one. That's funny, Brian. Palmer. Uh, in, the, so in the power bank thing. Uh, we'll do uh, we'll do hashtag uh, I don't know Tyson. I'm so old and comfortable in my sexuality that the gay allegations don't scare me. I learned when I turned fifty that what other people think of me does not mean fucking shit. I learned that I when I was thirty. <laughs> You're wise. I'm not. I was a late developer. I didn't get sober until it took I was me a 40, while too, though. It's forty-eight. Kind of, uh, it's uh, here, hashtag Tyson, guys. Oh, it's probably going to enter me. Is it going to enter me? Shit, it might have entered me for that. Um, if I win, I'll give it to Shane. Um, but, yeah, it, it was very refreshing to not care about what people think anymore. Because that was yeah, like, just... you think about it, you think about it with everything. It's just dumb. It's like. Totally I dumb. And, and and I look back and I don't have regret, but I listen to people who talk about it. You rob yourself of so much fucking joy. And for me, I was always a people pleaser. I had undiagnosed ADHD. On a bridge port. Okay. So you're saying it's the level of the machinist that matters? Or are you doing it by hand? Like, we're talking, obviously, about being able to program the machine to do it, not you doing it. But I think some machines don't have the capability to cut in that many different... I mean, we we really don't know. Accesses. We really don't know. Well, I know in woodworking, the minimal one... I forget what axis would cut out cabinet doors, for example, or cut out scales in a knife making like <coughs> deal. Does original goat does contour scales, don't they? It says all you need to do is lower and raise the axis. So you can program the machine to do it all and walk away. You don't have to, you're not using a manual mill. I don't know what the fuck a Bridgeport is, dude. Yeah, you do. Bridgeport knives. You reviewed them. That's what...
We should subsidize Oz his labor cost and get other people to pay for the shipping palmer conley that is very very wise you young man that is that true mean? and that is wise yep i thought so double detent so i don't know if that would give you the mill to do a set uh i would think it would i think that Mills uh, and my AWTs are not down, but they're not okay. Contoured. So, MC apparently said it was contoured and it confirmed it. Okay, but it must be very slightly contoured. So, they did exactly what I thought, where making it larger, they contoured it because it MC, who's she would feel you know, would be more comfortable that way. So, that's good to know. Uh, exactly, Kyle. MC knows everything. Well, if he confirmed it with a guy at Oz Machine Company, then we also confirmed it with Brian. So it's a slight contour, apparently. Beastro, I think Lefty could probably answer that. I mean, that's up to your bank account. And your preferences, no, for me, it's not worth it because I, I wouldn't. I have no could use you, for a double edged dagger like that. If they made could a you sheep feel the value difference, could you feel what? the value difference between a knife that has no play? Like they, if they're supposed oh, yeah, to be yeah, done, no, it feels incredible. I mean, it feels really good. I don't necessarily love the action on them because of how solid it is, because of the mechanism, it's a little less yeah. like. Um, but I mean, it's definitely worth the money. It's just for me, I, I have no use for that kind of knife. I want if I'm gonna spend that money, I want it to be like an EDC knife I can use and shit. Like that's just a double edged that you're and you're never gonna be in a situation where you're gonna fight somebody with your deadlock. Like it's kind of dumb. So practically, it makes no sense. But if you have the money and you love the design, then yeah. It's worth the money, so to speak. If that makes sense. I've seen it, but I haven't seen it in person, G-Ball. The out the front that Greg... Uh, somebody showed it to me. or some, Tri-State had it, showed it at Blade Texas or something, and he confirmed and everything. Um, again, I just don't care about that kind of stuff, but it's cool. Just, you know, And it'll probably be way cheaper. Um, all right, let's see how many uh people we got 75 on the giveaway. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's get Good out luck, of here. I want to eat a snack and uh and go to bed. I gotta get up with the kiddo tomorrow. I see, swear I know, if we see well, lefty in there, there, we'll know that I got entered. You got entered, I saw it go up. I didn't see it come through. Be hey! It ain't a deadlock, buddy. It's not a deadlock, but... But it's a good knife. That's funny. It's as slicey to me is the Quibbit. I mean, that's it's one of the sliciest knives I've had in my collection, even though it's a value knife. I've never tried that one. Uh, my email is right there, uh, leftedc88 at gmail.com. Hit me up. I'll send this out to you. You never tried a Quibbit? The Wii or whatever. I don't. Well, the Civivi. The Civivi yeah, is the cool one. I don't get a lot of Civivi knives in. You want to try one? I'll send it to you. I'm not buying them. That's for sure. And uh, no, but you're there's audience. a Wii that I like enough that I'll ask White Mountain to check it out. But that's about it. No, I don't care enough to check it out. It's just a button lock. Fucking. I just don't but care. Wii, I will tell you, Wii does button locks and Civivi. I put in that category. Better than anybody. The detent on this yeah. mini Alice. No, they definitely yeah. crushed the button lock game. Yeah. Totally agree on that. They've got Kaiser beat. They've got CJRB beat. They've got pretty much all of them beat on that. 
Um, one other it's, company does pretty good. Protect. They do great button locks. Lefty, throw your email up there again. For Beast Row, he didn't get it. I know it's Lefty88 or Lefty EDC88. Yeah, just shoot me an email. And if any of you guys hit me up about the lights, I'll check that a little later on Instagram, hopefully, or email, I guess. And I'll just, I'll go by timestamps. I saw a couple of you guys who wanted them, so. Have a good night, Foot Diesel. Uh, I think Big Red is on at one, right? Well, yeah, one year time, midnight my time. I think he's on tonight. I don't think he went early. So, yeah, he'll be on at midnight, Saturday Night Live. Live. And then tomorrow, start with Tri-State. Yeah, he's, he's going live. He's in 28 minutes. All right. So, y'all, I got time to go rub one out. And still have 26 to minutes to spare. <laughs> I'll still have 26 minutes to spare. Now it's the chick that fucking gave me the shade for wearing that fucked up hat last night. No tri-state tomorrow? Is he going to church? Pray for his fucking sins? I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Anything you wanted to cover before I shut it off? No, man. I'm just glad you all are all here. I love each and every one of you. I will be doing a uh, Metal Mondays light Monday night because Pocket Metal's got the in-laws coming in town. So I don't know how long I'll do it, but I'll do it for a while. Love to see you all there after Rob. All right. Sick. Check that out. Check out Big Red in a little bit and uh, check out everything tomorrow. Tri-State and Zach maybe and some other stuff. But uh, all right, cool. Love you guys. Hope you have a great night. And uh, we appreciate you. Catch you later. Peace.